What um, you got for well, us? no, I was just going to mention a couple of other gifts that my father uh, got. Well, what he got me once, I unwrapped once, having professed no interest ever in this particular uh, artist, about as much interest as um, Winston Churchill, um, I once received, lucky me, the making of Thriller. It was a, it was a video behind the scenes on Thriller. For Michael I Jackson know what film. he thinks, though. But he, he said to me, he thinks he said, Steve, he said, Steve loves to dance. No, he went, he went and you love music and you yeah. love films. Yeah, no, that, that's a film, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I've never professed any interest. I mean, I don't think it even had Thriller, the actual film on it. It was just the making of Thriller. Really? Behind the scenes. Michael Jackson dancing and, around. And John saying, Landis. Yeah, it was r rubbish. Well, well that's not blunt. very nice, is it? But what did you say when you opened it? Brilliant. Brilliant. I love Jackson. Can't wait to watch this. Can we watch it now, I said? What did he say? No. He's um, so ungrateful. Really? Yeah. Because I can't remember a time my dad bought me anything. It's always my mum who bought it, and my dad would give her the money. Yeah. You've got Ricky who's lost his go-kart. <laughs> You've had a video bought for you, and you're still not happy. <laughs> That's just <seems> selfish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, um... <laughs> it's not so much that I, I appreciate the, the fact that there is a gift. I think it's the sort of, it's the fact that the gifts are arbitrary and can be bought in the shop that's opposite the place he works. Don't tell Carl about what you got your yeah. man for this. Well, Listen to this, Carl, you'll love this. Right, yeah. It's the thought that counts, right? So I suppose if you say that the thought that counts is the fact that he went and got anything at all, that counts. Okay, mm. fair enough. But I phone, he phoned me up, he said, what shall I get your mother, right? It's her 20th wedding anniversary, <laughs> right? What shall I get her? I say, well, I'll tell you this, this is a great idea I'd heard from somewhere else. Why not get, like, a pay for it to have a makeover, you know, and all the sort of treatment, you know, and the beauty treatment, and that. Mm. she'll love that, you know, and then take her out, give her a meal and stuff. He went, okay, okay, okay. So he, he hangs up. I speak to him on the day of my mum's birthday. I say, what'd you get? What'd you get? He said, oh, I, I got something. I said, do you go for the makeover idea? He went, not exactly. I went, what'd you do? He went, I bought her a trowel. <laughs> a trowel. <laughs> I went, a trowel? He went, yeah, for the garden. <laughs> I went, it's a trowel. You've been married 20 years and you got her a trowel. He went, it's stainless steel. <laughs> I said, I said to him, it's a trowel, Dad. And he went, do you think I should have got it engraved? <laughs> it is mental. <laughs> and I went down to see them, right? And I went in the lounge and literally, imagine it, like, she wasn't this, but imagine, I got in there, he'd bought this trowel, <laughs> right? And he'd also bought her an industrial sized tin of coffee. You know those ones, that are those big size ones you have in, in like, hotels? <laughs> what did he say? She loves coffee, Steve. She loves coffee, Steve, he said. I love the fact that, that that's meant to be, like, like the whole family didn't use it. Like, she keeps that by her bed. Yeah. Like, she was in Stalag yeah. 13 or something. This is my coffee. So imagine that... walking into the lounge, right? She's there. <laughs> she's got the presents that my sister's bought in there. A trowel. <laughs> just holding a trowel and a tin of coffee. And me walking in wondering, I wonder if there's anything, sort of, that she regrets in her life. <laughs> Oh, that's lovely. She loves coffee, Steve. She loves coffee, Steve. Oh. She loves the garden. Oh. Did I ever tell you about the time that my father, when I was young, we went on holiday, my dad had a, he bought a little boat, um, a little sort of wooden boat, make a three-seater, and he and a friend of his went out with me in the boat, I was maybe 12 or 13, went out and we sort of, da, 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 so, well, I think we were on the, we had the little motor, outboard motor, ch 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 chugging out, we just thought, we, we thought this was real seafaring stuff. Brilliant. We, we sort of, we'd lost sight of the beach because we'd gone round a corner of a, like a mountain, or like a, what do you call it, like a cliff, and so we were just round the corner, and there was this boy, like a, just floating in the water, not a boy, but you know, like a, a boy, and uh, very tricky to explain that on the radio, it's the same word, isn't it? <laughs> Boy, boy, a boy, and yeah. a boy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so we we float past that, and we're just chugging along. The motor conks out. Oh, I can't believe it. We have to row back in. So we, they're rowing away. I'm just sat there, and uh, we noticed that every time we sort of think we've got past this boy, it just seems to be back where it started again. And we realised that the, the tide, tide taken is taking us, to, yeah. but not taking us out, taking us towards these rocks. And we've got ravaged rocks, and we were a bit pretty scared because I can't swim very well. Or I couldn't at the time. That we, I think my dad had maybe bought. You know, he didn't. I'll be honest with you. I inherited a lot of things from him. One of which was his. Carefulness with money. <laughs> <laughs> just, just the one life jacket. <laughs> um, How deep was the water? Which I seem to remember uh, he <laughs> tore off my back and put on himself. Um, <laughs> so the water is pretty. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm not saying we we would have necessarily died, but it was pretty scary because the boat, you know, we were going to crash into these rocks and stuff. It was getting pretty unnerving, and so we're they're sort of rowing like mad, trying to get. We're just not making any progress, and we're beginning to think that this might be the end. And um, this boat, this kind of ferry boat, comes chugging by, doing tours. Ching, 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 ching. And, um, and it comes by, and my dad goes, oh, wow. Well. Uh, we were going, brilliant, brilliant, they can help us, they'll throw us a rope, they'll tow us back in. He was going, you've got to be careful, though, hang on, because according to the laws of the sea, if he rescues us, Steve, he can claim my boat. 
the laws of the semen, you can claim my boat. I love the idea of That's like a reward. Do that. The laws of the sea. What I like is, his 12-year-old son might die, he's thinking about the boat. I know, but also, the other thing, of course, is that I like the idea of this ferry master going, Ah, the boat be mine now, or take your son. Yeah. Let me think about it. I need a new bed. (laughs) That'll be just right. King size. Well, it's like those people who, um, you know, those cab drivers that you'll meet at sort of three in the morning who've just got a car. Yeah. And just went out with a car. Yeah. And just, I'll, I'll, I'll pick people up and charge them. Yeah. I got in one once, I said to him, uh, a guy just pulled up, I said, uh, he said, I was in, like, uh, East London, I'm going back to, uh, North London. I said, uh, yeah, going to, uh, Swiss Cottage. He went, sure, hop in. <laughs> we set off. He went, do you know the way? <laughs> I said, well, not really, no. I, th- I thought you'd know the way. You're in a cabbie on. He went, no, I don't really know the way there. I, don't. I, said, I said, have you got an A to Z? He went, no. I thought, well, if you're going to go out just on the, you know, just winging it as a cab driver, yeah. two things, take a map and a torch. He didn't have yeah. either. He said, uh, well, I'll probably get to Camden. I said, well, I'll direct you from there. Drove on for about five minutes, making conversation. About five minutes later, he went, do you know the way to Camden? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you knew the way to count. I don't really know the way. I thought you did. <laughs> oh, it was loot. I mean, let I, me I, out. You know, four yeah, quid. Exactly. <laughs> And that's, I, I can't, I don't know who's got that sort of time on their hands that they just think it's three in the morning. I'm, I'm at a loose end. Mm. I think I'll go out doing a bit of cabbing. Well, obviously, Carl was out with me last night, and he saw that I'm, you know, he knows I'm a ladies' man, and that was obvious. Carl, you could see the vibe around me, couldn't you? Mm. When the, you know, when the chicks were talking to me, and uh, just re- remembered recently, actually, I was on a train coming back from uh, hometown Bristol. And I was on the train, and, uh, this girl walks on, good-looking girl, I thought, hey, uh, it, largely empty carriage, I'm thinking, my luck's in. You know, cos I, I take every opportunity, Carl, that's the thing about me, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't choose. She was a good-looking girl, she sat down, I thought, she sat down right near me, I thought, brilliant. As, uh, the guy, this guy comes up behind her, and she's, I think, oh, it's probably a boyfriend or something, he sits down next to her. And I listened in on the conversation, you know, because I'm pretending to read, it was very clever, I read the same page for hours, so I was pretending to listen. I was listening, but pretending to read. And, um, I realised that it's not her boyfriend or anything, it's just some guy she's met on the platform. And I'm thinking, brilliant, if she's the kind of girl who's just going to start talking to someone, you know, on a platform, on a train, brilliant, I'm going to be in here. Because he was only going one stop. So I'm thinking, what's the worst that can happen? He'll nick off, you know, I'll get chatting to her, you know, and uh, who knows, I could join the, what's the, is there a train equivalent? Foot High Club. <laughs> the Foot High Club, brilliant. And uh, so I'm excited, you know, I'm listening in. And uh, it turns out that they're both kind of uh, graduates, they've just finished university, or they're just they're coming to their finals or something. And they're chatting away, you know, and he's making a couple of witticisms, you know. And she's kind of tittering at his jokes. I'm thinking, well, I'll tell you this, if she's laughing at this kind of material, I am going to blow her away, you know, with my kind of anecdotes and wry observations, you know. Yeah. It was weak stuff, i got to be honest. <laughs> really? He was coming out with nothing. He, yeah. he was running on empty, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And she was loving it. So I'm thinking, brilliant, I'm going to be right in here. And then they get moving on to a higher break things, you know, and, um, I think she was going to study kind of uh, Marxism or, so, or something like that, uh, or communism, something. And uh, she was asking him, you know, by way of conversation, she was asking him what he knew about Marxism, you know. Mm. And he was fumbling for some, his vague knowledge of it that he had in his yeah. life. And I'm just that, sat there thinking, yeah, come on, love, in any given capitalist environment, the proletariat will revolt against their oppression wow. by the bourgeoisie, and after a brief <laughs> period of socialist rule, emerges a classist society governed by community corporations. Well, if that know. sort of talk wouldn't get a woman hot, I don't, come know, on, I don't Rick. know what, what you'd use If then Marx to... and Engels is Doesn't... not going to get a woman sweaty down below, uh, and know. nothing is. No. My name is. You're not just biding your time. Yeah? Exactly. I yeah, thought, yeah, I'm, yeah, wait, yeah, I'm just yeah. going to go in for the kill any yeah, minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so anyway, uh, anyway, yeah, it, it's, it comes to his stop, right? He gets off. I'm thinking this is this is a piece of cake, and he gets off, and off he goes. He walks off, and I'm thinking brilliant. And I thought I'll wait. You know, I'll wait till the train's pulled. Away. I'm not going to leap in straight away. No. And uh, he comes back on the carriage, and I'm thinking, hang on a minute. He goes, uh, listen, uh, do you mind if I give you my email address, Aww. right? And uh, if you want to get in touch, email me. I'm thinking, come on, you loser, get off now, save your face, please, <laughs> yeah. before it's too much. And she accepts the email address because she obviously doesn't want to hurt his feelings, whatever. I'm thinking, fair enough, she's a good woman, I'm liking her. I'm, yeah. her. I'm thinking, that's my kind of girl. So anyway, um, he gets off. I'm sat there, the train pulls away. I'm thinking, yeah, I'll wait a few minutes, you know, I'll just, you know, give it some time. Her phone rings, it's her friend on the phone. And, uh, she starts to say, and I was listening in, and she was going, uh, yeah, just met a guy on the train. I'm thinking, yeah, that's true enough. She goes, yeah, he was a uh, good looking guy. I thought, you're having a laugh, love. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Because. <laughs> I was looking at him, and she said, she said to her friend, he looks a bit like tennis player Boris Becker. I thought, well, you, you, you should be so lucky, frankly, because I saw him, he had awful facial hair, if that's what makes him look like Boris Becker. A terrible little goatee beard, it was laughable. <laughs> I thought, you, I don't know, and then she uh, goes, she goes to think, and she's like, yeah, I met him, we got chatting and stuff, you know, and I was, and she was going, it's not often that, um, it's not often that you meet someone, you know, generally in life, who's, you know, kind of thoughtful and intelligent and funny. I thought to myself, I'm not even going to waste my time with you, love. <laughs> Frankly, if that's what you thought of him. 
<laughs> you just walked yeah. away. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't even bother talking to her. No, you were I just didn't even waste if, my time with if her. If she really. thinks that bloke is not if only she a great looking, was funny, but great funny looking. and intelligent, and she got on well, and he was polite, and it was a chance meeting, and he thought, and she, and she thought that you were like a freaky looking dork who didn't exactly. even have the nerve to if speak. If that is what if she, that's what she thinks, thinking, then I don't want to know it. I couldn't. You walked away, and good luck to you. And I have my dignity in Yes, and she's nothing. What about your Christmas? My thing? dad, uh, does, I'm wondering if you're turning into my dad, because, uh, he, um, he bought my mum a bracelet. He won't mind me talking about this, because he said you'll probably talk about this on the radio, and you're right, dad, I am talking about it. He bought my, my mum a, uh, little gold bracelet, lovely, lovely gift, you know, it was a lovely thing, and I, she opened it, she loved it, and everyone thought, what a great gift, lovely gift. He wouldn't stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't stop talking about the gift he bought. He kept on grabbing my mum's arm and showing it to people, look at that, look at the gleam on that. <laughs> Steve, Steve, look at the shine on that. Look at the gleam there. <laughs> look at the that. And he, do you know what he said? He went. He said the great thing about that's pure gold. He went. It's an investment. <laughs> that's, that's an investment, man. It's got. Oh. You know, it's always worth oh, something. Gold. I love that when people give a gift and it goes an investment. But, I love it. But what? Not only is it, does it sort of take away any of the romanticism of it, but it was the way he constantly was talking about how great a gift it was I'll that tell he what, I haven't. I haven't heard the word gleam for it's thirty funny. years. Look at the gleam on that. The gleam. Look at that. Look at the sparkle on that. And look at that. And it looks like rope. That's what he kept saying. It looks like rope. <laughs> it's like gold rope. <laughs> and, uh, he just can't, I don't know, I, I heard, he disappeared, we, we opened the gifts, he went disappear, I could hear him in the kitchen going, think about that, that's, that's pure gold, that, Elaine, that's pure gold. <laughs> might melt, I might melt that down. Yeah. John, next door, <laughs> the next door neighbour, John, look at that, look at the shine on that. That's great. That's brilliant, though. But it's just it doesn't it sort of undermine the gift a bit if you keep on droning well, no, on about people, it. People, if people enjoy giving, that's nice, isn't it? And you got to, you know, what did your mum say? She well, loved she it. couldn't get a word in each way. <laughs> <laughs> That's a step up from a jar of coffee, though, isn't it? It is a step up, yeah. That's good. But no, I have to just say once, though, Go this on. is about my, this is my DJing credentials. I was once playing, uh, music at a scout jamboree. Yeah. When I was about 17, big 16, gig, 17. Big, big, big gig. gig. There was a thousand scouts there. Yeah. Right, yeah. They, and I'll tell you this, we were playing on stuff, they were loving it, they were dancing, it was in a big marquee, right? right? I slapped on Smells Like Teen Spirit. Yeah. Right? They went mad. They went moshing. mad for it, they were, they were moshing, they were climbing up the poles, the organisers were going, switch that off, switch that off, right, they're going crazy, and I was there going, no, that's what they like, I'm gonna do it. It and was like Footloose. It was unbelievable, it was just like Footloose. Then I came in with Raging Against the Machine, Killing in the Name of, the place you went were, wild, yeah. and they were trying to get me off the decks, it was like Bill, it was like Bill Grundy interviewing the Sex Pistols. And then when, when the, the head of the had you killed, <laughs> exactly. like, there was some sort of mafia thing, and it was all hushed up, that the scouts went there one night with all candles and they said by your grave, and that, and that was the end of the film. <laughs> it was a film, I assume. <laughs> you no, know, this genuinely to... happened. I assume this didn't really happen. Yes, you... it did. I swear to God, I was playing Smells Like Teen Spirit, and it went wild, and they were, the organisers were going, switch that off, they're going crazy, and I was going, no, it's what they want. Can I say something? It was brilliant. That, to me, I've, I've known you for about, um, four years, yeah. and I've heard all those that must be the highlight of your life. Unbelievably so, yeah. It's, you've never had anything that good no. or exciting since, have you? One day I hope to sleep with a lady, and hopefully <laughs> that'll, uh, it'll slide into second place. Well, Rick, you're not the only one who's been away. I know you've been off working, yeah. but I, at uh, long last, have taken a bit of leisure time. Go on. And, uh, <laughs> you've probably heard of the Rio de Janeiro Carnival. Only one of the, uh, the hottest, uh, you know, events in the world oh, calendar. Yeah. <laughs> imagine me down there. Oh, Rio, God. Rio, you can imagine, did not know oh, what hit it. Oh, God almighty. Oh, were you like, uh, Paul the Party Animal Park? He would not have been able to keep up if he was with me. God, what did you do? Oh, what did you get up to? Oh, let me tell you right now. Um, day one, I almost drowned. Day two, I got a foot infection and spent the day in the hospital. And the rest of the time, I had diarrhea. <laughs> So that's, uh, <laughs> that's the, that was a hell of a, that was a hell of a time. Carnival. Yeah. Yeah, I did, uh, I was able to watch some of the carnival on TV. Oh, And right. it looked brilliant. It looked did amazing. It? Um, I didn't actually, I, it was difficult to make out because the TV wasn't actually in my room. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because in an effort to save money, I wasn't staying in a hotel, I was staying with a bunch of other people in some kind of, like, someone's flat that they'd let out. <laughs> and, uh, so I had to look, I had to watch the TV, like, from my window, watching a neighbour's TV. And, of course, when they changed the channel, you know, often during the juicy bits, I couldn't see anything. And, um, so, but it looked really good. I'm bunged up at the moment just so I can get through the show. But I've just been on a 12-hour flight, and it is terrifying being on a flight when you know that any moment you could go. Because, you know, the problem is sometimes the toilet's free and sometimes in you've got to queue up mm. and the worst bit is that that sort of half an hour just before you land when they say the toilets are out of bounds now 
I'd say I went twice before that in quick succession. The woman sat next to the toilet. She was, she didn't know what was going on. <laughs> the noises and stuff in there. And I was, because I was really oh. panicky. Oh, Christ. And, um, and so, of course, then on the whole flight, uh, as we're landing, I'm just, I'm really petrified because I'm thinking this could, I mean, I packed a pair of underpants and jeans in my, in my bag, in my hold all, just in case it all went. Oh, and I was no. really, because I hate flying anyway, and I hate landing because it's the most terrifying moment of the journey. Then it really was rumbling, and I was thinking, I've got to get out of here. Of course, you know, you know when you're in a hurry, everything, suddenly, everything makes you angry. The little old lady in front of me who's just hobbling along off the gangplank, get yeah. out of my way! Yeah. Thinking, you know, just really, you know, with your, with your, with your bad hips and yeah, your bad and legs. Yeah, your Zimmer frame. I know you've been through a war, but get out of my way! <laughs> yeah. And just anyone who kind of even passes, you're, oh, you just, you're, oh. And uh, so I, yeah, I managed to get there just in time, got into the, t and it all went off. Man alive, it was, it was grim. But then that was, that was not anything compared with the first couple of days, because the first day I was, I went for a walk, and of course Ipanema Beach is famous, I mean obviously the girl from Ipanema, one of the most famous songs in the world, and it's, Ipanema Beach is famous for just the beautiful, beautiful people that gather there, and it is extraordinary, I mean the people are remarkable. There's so many beautiful women in Rio, it made me angry, <laughs> I was angry that these women were so attractive and that, you know, none of them were even looking at me. So, but anyway, I'm on the beach, because I, I was shopping and I needed a wee. Right, and we went for a quick impromptu swim, and I thought, oh, are we in the, in Just the sea? Just think of him! I'm the right with diarrhea! Well, I'm wearing great big long shorts, because I'm not going to try and compete with these boys, because they and are- And you are, could I say this, the whitest man uh, yeah. I've ever met in my life. Yeah. I mean, with his shirt off, you can see his heart like a newborn fish. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, <laughs> well, this is the thing, as I went into the sea to have a wee, oh, there was a discussion about this. As I went into the sea to have a wee? <laughs> yeah, well, I was desperate for a toilet, and I, and I was shopping, and I, so I thought, well, I'm never going to make it back to the hotel. So I'll go in the in the sea and have a little swim and, and just swim. Don't see him straining, just like a cat in well, a litter tray. See, there was a discussion about this because I'm very much of the opinion that you should take your trunks down. And some people, uh, some of my friends are saying, just do it in your trunks and let's see the sea just wash it away. What a hell of a carnival! Well, and I think that's I'm against that. I've always been against that. Against that in swimming pools, everything you know. So I so no, I have to, I'm against pissing in swimming pools. Full stop. It doesn't matter whether you do get in, take your trunks down or let don't piss in the pool. Sea. Yeah, well, it's fine, yeah. Fine, okay, right, fish, so, fish do it, so. so. anyway, so I'm in the sea trying to, trying to urinate, and I, so I kneeled, because I'm obviously very tall, so it's tricky to get deep enough for the water to, to mask what you're up to. So I tried to kneel down in the water, right, and, and I got the, I got John Thomas out, but then the water swept out again and just left me on the beach. <laughs> So, but luckily my, my back was to everyone, so no one saw. So, um, so I, so I, I can't think of a funnier sight than Steve Merchant on his knees with his little John Thomas out. I don't know how big it is, I've never seen it. But, I mean, I imagine it's in proportion to the yeah. rest of it, is it? I know. Um, this all, all I'll say is I've been a little shortchanged. But, um, so I, so then I got up and I waded a bit deeper in, right? And, uh, now I was sort of, I was, I was trying, I got it out. But what I didn't realise is that the waves just off the beach are really just uncontrollable. You never know what's going to happen. So one minute they're calm, and the next minute they're crazy like a tsunami. So um, so suddenly I see this giant wave coming towards me, crashing towards me, and I got the cock out and everything, and it grabs this wave, comes over me, and lifts me up, and flips me up in the water, right? And I'm floundering around, I can't see anything, because of course I had to take my glasses off <laughs> to, to go in the sea. <laughs> Because oh I didn't want, I didn't want to lose them. Oh God! So, so I, so I floundering around, and I'm wait, genuinely getting scared because I, as I try to get into shore, the wave just pulls me back again. So I'm waving to my friends on the beach, but what with I everything. Well, what I don't realise is that because I'm wearing my, because I'm not wearing my glasses, I don't realise that I've been dragged along the beach some way, and I'm not actually waving <laughs> to my friends. So there's like a bunch of these beautiful women on Ipanema Beach. <laughs> watching a pasty white man <laughs> waving with his cock out. <laughs> and, and what annoyed me was my friends were laughing. And that Steve, really, really angered me. if I'd have been there, I would have burst. But why wouldn't you have come running, would you have come running in and helped me? Not with your knob out. What? So even though I was screaming and shouting? I would have thrown a rope or something, or, or a dinghy or something. I'd have, I, there's no way I'd have... I, no, I couldn't have saved you with your glasses off and your knob out. <laughs> when, if, I, if I ever save you, I want you to be fully dressed with your glasses on. So you'd have just let me go. You'd have, that would have been what you'd said to my parents. <laughs> he had his knob out and his glasses off. There was no way I was going to... I gonna... can't think of a funnier sight. Oh. 
I'm we're talking about embarrassing stories and stuff, and I don't know if I've told this on this radio before. Have I told you, Carl? I'm not sure. But this was when I was working at the BBC. This is not even long ago, and I moved to London, and I was fairly new in London. And I was working at the BBC, and I had this BBC hire car. And I've never told it. If there's anyone listening who works for the BBC, I don't know if I can still get in trouble for it. But uh, this BBC hire car, and it was like I'd been ferrying kind of actors and people and production people around all day in this car. And I was driving back. It was quite late. It was about sort of seven or eight. And I was driving back, and I pulled in to get some petrol to fill up the car every day. And I went into this garage to fill up some petrol, and I was there. And this blokes, two blokes came in in a white van, right? They took, pulled into the, in the forecourt, and I was filling out the car. And they went, Hey, do you want to buy a couple of speakers? And I said, Yes, I do. Yeah. Because I, the, tell you the reason, it was like I was so flattered that they thought I'd be the kind of bloke who would A, need some kind of classy speakers, and yeah. B, would like to buy them on the sly. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I thought, yeah, they like the They've they, seen me. They They've seen I look a bit of a hustler. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a street sort of guy. You can yeah. see, by the way, I use my walk. Exactly. Yeah. So they, so I, I couldn't believe my luck. So uh, they drove behind the garage, the little sort of garage bit at the back, and I went round there, sort of casually went round there, sort of locked the car, went round there. Uh, <laughs> they went, yeah, open the back. You had these speakers in there. I, I said, are you sure these aren't knocked off, mate? He went, no, no. We work for Dixon's. This is a story he's telling me. We work for Dixon's, right? And we're delivery men. And if we make a delivery and the person's not there to sign for the goods, then we have to bring them back to the warehouse. But if we can sell them on the way back, yeah. then that's really good that for Dixon's. Happens. That, yeah, Dixon's must love that. And instead of thinking, <laughs> are you sure some kind of troubleshooter didn't, I mean, did someone go into Dixon's and go, yeah, you're not, you're not getting in the uh, garage so forecourt market? Jones. Exactly. Get a couple of lads in a white van. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So anyway, so I sort of, bought this story, and, it, and I was a little bit dubious, and I went, right, let me hear them then. And he wired them up to the car stereo, and boom, 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 they explained. So it was some groovy hip-hop, I was thinking, great, these guys know what I'm into. Yeah. And I, he's giving me the talk and stuff, and, um, I said, I'm a bit worried these are, these are knocked off. He went, no, listen, uh, we've got a bloke at Dixon's who can confirm this is fine, right? Phone him up, use my mobile, right, and quote this reference number, right? So I phone out, and the bloke goes, yeah, I go, hi, some guys here in a garage forecourt trying to sell me some speakers. Just wanted to check, he went, it's fine. I went, should I, should I just read the reference number or whatever you want if you want? And X149, I'm like, yeah, fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. that was, don't you? That was actually <laughs> Mr. Dixon himself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I'm thinking, well, you know, they sound great. They're yeah. giving me to a, for a knockdown price. I'd say they were like 400 quid, they were like 200 quid or something. It was a good bargain. I was in the market for some speakers as well. Yeah. So, uh, while they were loading it's them in... It's all kosher. I phoned Dixon. <laughs> exactly. I yeah, phoned yeah, Dixon. Yeah, That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, so while they're loading them in the back of the BBC hire car, right? I'm in there paying for the petrol, right? And the guy serving goes, E, oh, you're right. He goes, What were you doing around the back with those blokes? Right? Because obviously there's security cameras filming this whole transaction, right? And, and he goes, What are you doing around the back? And I went, brilliantly, I went, There's some old mates. Some of my mates were just having a chat and that. He went, Oh, right, okay. Like, give me obviously the evil eye. So I went out the back. And so I'm in the car now, and I'm driving with one of the blokes who's in the van with me because I didn't have the money on me. So I had to go to the cash point to get the cash, right? <laughs> so I'm driving with him, and the other guy's like, following me in the van. And he was like a northerner, like you, and he was giving it all the, all right, yeah, you know. I said, My girlfriend's a DJ. She's got some of these speakers. They're fantastic. Da -da -da, and he's giving me this. And then my mind starts working. Now that I've got a bit of time to think, I'm thinking, Wait a minute. This all sounds a bit dodgy. Yeah. It dawned on me, Rick. You, you, you know, full, are you? You're streetwise. <laughs> exactly. You're streetwise, Steve. <laughs> Not only yeah. that, I was thinking, how am I going to get them home? I've got to drop the car off at the BBC. How am I yeah. going to get these huge speakers back to where I live? And how can I pay for them? Because I've just spent £100 on Find the Lady. <laughs> exactly. With a couple of blokes in the <laughs> exactly. yeah. It seems like a fair game. <laughs> Some of his so friends I, were winning. But So I explained to him, I said, how I can't get them back to like, Brixton where I was living at the time. He went, don't worry, give us an extra 20 quid, we'll take them home for you. Oh, that's good, <laughs> deliver it. Yeah, they, do, they, they, they do a whole service, Steve. <laughs> and there's also a backup guarantee. Did they have the guarantee, the three-month guarantee? <laughs> they didn't. No. But okay. so then, so, did they say, I said, I'm not sure about that. He went, well, why don't you put them in a cab, send them out, and your housemates can collect it. I was like, oh, no, there'll be no one in. And I was getting, and I was beginning to sort of get a bit conscious of, like, maybe this was a bit of a scam, after all. So I pulled into, like, a little side road, and I said, I'm not sure I'm into this now, actually. He went, what are you talking about? It's 200 quid for Paris because it's a bargain. You get a bargain like this, man. I'm going, not too sure, actually. I don't think I want him. He went, 150 quid, 150 quid, mate, 150 quid. I went, no. He said, 100 quid, 100 quid now to you. I'm thinking, wait a minute, this doesn't sound like kind of work that Dixon's would be doing. Dixon's don't do that when I go in. Dixon's never negotiate in that way. When I go there and look around and I leave, they go, where are you going? I'm just like, no, we'll have anything then. Have anything for a So I stopped the car and the white van pulled up behind me with his mates in. Sure. And, uh, and I said, can you get them out? I'm not interested. And he went, oh, under, under quid, mate. Oh, you, you, and he was just going, you tosser, you, you obviously want some speakers. Duh, duh, duh. And he was having a go at me. So I was carrying the speakers out and putting them back in the white van. And he was just showing at me. He was going, 70 quid, 70 quid. I was like, 70 quid from 200. This is ludicrous. You realise that wasn't Dixon's policy <laughs> exactly. then. Exactly. They don't usually shout moment. you tosser as you leave the, <laughs> as you <laughs> leave the shop and walk down Camden High Street. They're exactly. not usually shouting <laughs> you tosser. You should have sought the offer of, like, the monthly payments over on at the
So, um, yeah. so yeah. I eventually I put him in there and I sort of knocked the deal on the head and I got back in my car and uh, they got, they were in theirs and I just looked in the rearview mirror and they were punching the dashboard like with aggression and venom like we let that deal slip through our fingers and I've never been so terrified in my life. I just sat there. I was just thinking, oh my god, all I was thinking now is what if I go back to the BBC and they go, we've had a call from the police, the man at the garage, he saw yeah. you doing the dodgy deal. I love it. Yeah. Well, what you do is what you do is you put the car car in a drain in your front yard <laughs> and then go in and out of the toilet just pouring bleach down or Ajax and they never know. I, I have to say, this is such a terrible confession. When I was doing a school play once, God. when I was about that age, 15, <sighs> right, there was a girl uh, who was in the cast with me, yeah. right, and she sort of, you know, she was giving me the eye. I was thinking, yeah. Well, she, I kind of thought she was, right? And there was, <laughs> it was, there was glass. <laughs> but there was another guy, there was another guy there as well, I was sort of competing for affection. Oh, no. And uh, he was quite a witty guy. His name was Scott Hansen, he yeah. had long blonde hair. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I thought, well, the way to impress her, because I was 15 or whatever, I thought I was pretty smart. I sat in one of the adjoining dressing rooms, reading a copy of the, um, philosophical, uh, book, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, which I didn't understand, but we actually sat there reading it in the hope that she would walk in and think, my God, you're he, reading Zen in the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. You don't go with the crowd. You don't want to come next door where we're talking about nonsense and people yeah, are flirting. We're talking about the bangles yeah, and yeah. pretty whirlies. You're in here saying, look, just, if you want to come and talk to me, you're welcome, but I'm not- I, I'm a thinker. I bet you thought you were Kwai Chang Kane, didn't I, you? I thought it yeah. was like she'd think, Jesus Christ, I know, I've never met anyone like him. That is genius. And she, she, I remember what, the one time she accidentally walked in, she went, oh, oh, sorry, wrong room, and left again. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. I, because when I was younger, I remember being outside the post office once when I was about 10 or 12, and finding a purse, and thinking, oh, that's nice. <laughs> and I opened it up, and there was some money in there, and a pension book, and so it was obviously an old lady. I, had an, I found an address, I sent it to her, and my mum said, you know, you've been so good there, you'll probably get a little reward. She'll probably send you a little reward. Nothing! I got maybe a thank you note, but no cash, no Mulan, nothing. Really? And I was livid, because I'd been told that I was going to get a reward. I thought, I've been a good Samaritan, nothing. So, Many moons later, when I was at university, I learnt from that, and I- and this is- this is the most bizarre thing. It this was like, explains a lot, doesn't it, Carl? This <laughs> is like the Mary Celeste. I went to uh, a cash point to put my- I thought, I can't get my card in here. And I realised there was already somebody's card in the machine, they put the code in, but, um, <sighs> but they-, they but the, then they just disappeared. They'd been kidnapped or something, so it was just there, waiting, sitting, said, what do you want to do? And it gave you a number of options. I thought, Interesting. Steal or go to <laughs> yeah, heaven? Yeah, exactly. He went, oh dear. Um. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I pressed, uh, balance, just to check what their bank balance was. Unbelievable. It was a considerable sum of money. I'm not gonna lie to you. It was not typical student debt. It was like, I think they were a foreign student, there was a lot of cash in there. A lot of Did money. Did you feel a slight bulge in your trousers when you saw the amount of money? I couldn't believe my luck. <laughs> I thought to myself, <laughs> now then, I could just take that card out and hand it in. Or I could teach them a small lesson, right? And maybe give myself a reward because last time I did that, I didn't yeah. get a reward. So if I give myself thirty pounds, mm. then I'll take the card out. Thirty. Give myself thirty. Yeah. You didn't really. Pounds. Well, I thought that's a good reward, and I and I went in, I handed the card in, I took Steve, it. Steve, and that's, that's a little reward for me. And I'll tell you this: don't think it's evil because I went in, I bought everyone a drink. Uh, well, brilliant. Yeah, I didn't yeah. tell them I got the money free. Well done, excellent. So, so uh, uh, probably gangsters are quite generous with well, the money they <laughs> stole from other people. Yes, but someone's negligence, Rick, has lent. The, the, well, so the thing is this, Steve. Right? I, do, I, I I believe it, except the buying people a drink, Carl. What do you think? Well, <laughs> I kind of thought that when he said it, but then I thought, but they'll be buying one in back. So he's still that. So in a way, he's still a winner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone's a winner in that situation, including the student, because frankly, if there had been a, a less scrupulous person who found it, they'd have probably helped themselves to a considerable I sum. I cannot believe he did that. There was thousands and but thousands if, of pounds in there. What if it was, uh, what if Beadler jumped out and slapped you with his little claw and said, we've been filming this merchant? Well, what, so what? How old were you then? I don't know, 19, 20? Would you do it again or was it just to get the world back for the old lady's purse? Um. Possibly do it again, yeah. You're, jo you're joking! Well, you've got to think of it this way, you've got to think of it as there was a lot of money in there and someone less scrupulous than me would have taken a fortune. They'd have cleaned them out. Whereas I just took a small reward which I thought was more than enough for someone's negligence. <laughs> and I've returned the card, they've got the card back, everything's fine. Think of I someone else, I could have gone on a spending spree, I could have been buying stuff, all sorts. Yeah, but it wasn't yours at all. Yes, but it's- they probably would have given me a reward. 
And because, you know, sometimes people forget or, you know, they don't give you a reward, I thought I should take it myself. You had to your dad from nicking a loaf of bread out of a phone box. Yeah, but that's because it's for old people, geriatrics and stuff. How do you know how old was your people you were robbing from? It's it a it was on a student hungry. campus. Mm. Well. Wow. I think it was more, I thought it was excellent behaviour. I God, thought it was good on the that, that is, that's shown another side to him, isn't it? Steve, you got any other toilet-related <laughs> anecdotes? Rick, my life is just full of toilet trauma. Yeah. And I, Carl, you may not realise this, but uh, a while back I used to host, this is bizarre, I used to host a radio show on the BBC World Service, right? Now, you, if you want someone who's, got, who's the voice of integrity, the voice of intelligence, the voice of a nation, you're going to come to me. That's yeah. obvious. And I was broadcasting, so, now they've got listeners of something like 50, 60 million people around the world. It's mental, the listenership of the World Service. And I used to host this show with someone It's a big else. place, Steve. The world? Yeah. You're absolutely right. And uh, anyway, so I had to, I had to be into uh, Bush House, where they broadcast from, 10 o'clock every Friday morning to broadcast around the world to 50 million people, right? And one week, uh, I went to the toilet in my house, right? Everyone had left. I got there a bit late. I got up a bit late. Already against me. The clock was already against me. Had to be there at 10 o'clock, broadcast around the world. And we got two toilets in our house, downstairs one, right? And the door had already been a bit dodgy. It was one of those doors where you had to give it a bit of a kick because you went in. It was, getting a bit, it was getting a bit tight. I don't know what the w wood was expanding or something. You know, I'm in there. And same thing again happens, no toilet paper. I think, oh, God, I'm going to have to somehow kind of make it up. Why don't you check first? I normally do, Rick. I normally do. It's just on a certain occasions when I'm bleary-eyed or something, I just, I forget. Or occasionally I forget. Normally I do check. Right. And um, you've got to bear in mind that it's not like this is happening every week. This is over the course of many years that sure. these incidents have acc accumulated. So um, You've condensed them. For the purposes of this anecdote. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, sure. um... Great, you're, you're, you're brilliant. Keep the, keeping the pace up of an anecdote there, Rick, you've just drawn in. I don't know where I am now. Anyway, oh, no, I know where I am. I'm trapped in a toilet with no toilet paper. Yeah. That's where I am. And I'm thinking maybe I peel off some of the wallpaper, you know, things like that. But there's nothing I can do. I got to go upstairs. Newspaper. Well, exactly. But I got to go upstairs and find toilet a note. paper. Was there any? <laughs> there wasn't. Sorry. There wasn't. Oh. I got to go upstairs and maybe find a notepad or something like that. Oh. And uh, so I try the door. Right, the door's wedged. And I'm pulling on the door and I can't get the door open. It's just like it won't come open. And it's already, and I knew it was going to come to this at some point. Like, this is like, the clock's ticking. I'm trying to pull the door open. Tries to run my ankles again. And I'm thinking, well, what I could do is I could open the window, I suppose, and like try and climb out. But not really, because I got the trousers around the ankles. And that's or if it was cool. raining, just stick your ass out, <laughs> two birds with one stone. Sadly, it was a beautiful day, Rick. It's, I call it the World Bee Day. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, so what I'm thinking is, well, wonder. I've got my mobile phone in there, luckily, because it's in my pocket. I'm thinking, well, maybe I could phone. I would seriously. Kleenex. Think, maybe I'll phone <laughs> the fire brigade. By this point, and it just dried. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it, it was. Hold it was, on. Was that little puppy not around? Because uh, sometimes you can call that. It's got a little bit wrapped round it. Listen. Or just use the puppy issue. itself. There's 50 million people around the world going to yeah. need to hear my voice in like yeah. 30 minutes. Exactly. And Where's Steve? He's not locked in a toilet again, is he? <laughs> exactly. Oh, no. So, um, so, so I'm thinking about phoning the fire brigade, and I'm thinking, sure. like, if I do that, it's gonna, you know it's going to be the first call that goes straight on the speakerphone yeah. for like the entire fire brigade service everywhere. With a butch hero carrying you down over his shoulders with your trousers around your ankles. <laughs> exactly. Can I just not pull him up? No. You've got to be learned a total lesson. Yeah. But I imagine the idea of a friend up and going, uh, hello there, I'm, uh, yeah, a bit of, I'm trapped in a room in my house. Oh yeah, which one is it? Oh, it's you quite don't need small. to know. It's quite <laughs> small. Is it? Yeah. yeah. It's not the toilet, is it? Because we don't want to come and rescue someone who, who's trapped in the toilet. Which no. service do you require? <laughs> Paper. <laughs> so, um, so I, I think I can't find the fire brigade, the clock's ticking. So then I think, I think one of my housemates is still in the house, but still asleep. So I phone the house number, right, phone rings and rings and rings for ages. And eventually, he answers the phone, <laughs> right? Gets out of bed, answers the phone, yeah. Hi, it's Steve. All right, what's wrong? Oh, I'm what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. Oh, I didn't make it. I don't know. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just... In the toilet. I'm just downstairs in the toilet. Oh, yeah, what are you doing? Oh, I'm well, I've finished what I'm... Have, have you got any <laughs> toilet paper? Any bog roll? Yeah. So he had to, um, kind of scrape together a few bits of paper, you know, and sort of tin foil or whatever he could find yeah. in the house. A right? cactus. Come down oh, no. Pass it f underneath the door. Right, and now I to, then he, I said, "Can you move away from the door while I? Because I don't want you to hear me as I'm, you know, wiping the." And so you he didn't did say it. that. Yeah, well, I didn't want him to. You know, that's what, that's what, embarrassing. Sorry, what, what that's you, embarrassing. What were you wiping yeah, it with? Not tumbleweed. What do you mean? What <laughs> no, noise? I know what you mean. Yeah. No, exactly. Right. So um, so then I say, right, can you smash? Why the was he hovering? <laughs> Why didn't he want to walk away? <laughs> Well, you keep your head, what was it <laughs> outside with a glass to his ear? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thankfully, there was there was there was a window in the door, but it was frosted glass. Right. You could just see my my semi-naked body moving around, and um, 
So eventually I said to him, look, listen, I'm going to need you to sort of kick the door in. He said, well, I don't want to kick the door in because you're going to have to pay for it, aren't we? I go, yeah, but i got to go to the World Service. I got to... Well, yeah. And he was a lovely man. He's the weakest man you've ever, you've ever come across. It's like you, if there's one person you don't want to have to throw their body weight against the door, it was him. It's like he'll snap before the door will. So he's smashing against this the door. This sounds like a fetish to me, though. He went in there and there you were naked with lots of toilet paper. And you go, oh, you've broken the door down, and there I am naked. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Oh, you've rumbled me, Rick. <laughs> I wish I'd not told that embarrassing story on the radio. <laughs> like it wasn't embarrassing enough, you've just got to make it slightly more seedy. <laughs> oh, so did he, did, did he get it down? He did it, yeah, and I got to the World Service with, like, minutes to spare. Oh. And uh, interestingly, I told that story to 50 million people around the You're world. Joking. Yeah. Did they understand? Listen, I'll be honest with you, Rick. I it's my birthday today. Oh, last night I went out. I got I got a little bit wasted. Yeah. So I'm I'm quite, I'm hungover this morning. I, I didn't get to bed before eleven. <laughs> right. So yeah, it's like I it's like too much no. I I'm pretty, I was pretty wild last night. In yeah. actual fact, and I have to say, I went to I've, the God knows how many units I had. <laughs> I went to the uh, Monarch in the Camden. Oh, Monarch, yeah, yeah. There was some kind of groovy night on. Yeah. I went to the door. I got a load of mates with me. I said. Um, any uh, discount for XFM DJs? You didn't really. Yeah, I did. I did. I, did. I was oh. a bit drunk. He went. He, he went. Who are you? I went. Steve Merchant, Ricky Gervais. He went. Steve Merchant, brilliant. You can come in for free. No, he did. Yes, he did. I swear to God. He said yes, he did. He said, and I said, what well, about mates? He went. It's five pounds. They can have a pound off. He said, but, and I think basically, <laughs> but basically, Rick, I think I also agreed that you'd DJ there. <laughs> I can't remember, oh. but if, if the guy is listening, he could maybe let us know if I promised that. I might have signed something. I can't remember. Oh God. Oh, but anyway, no. it was a good this night. It's like, sure. like a, one of those fifties sitcoms when, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, you sold my soul to an angel. <laughs> exactly. Oh, am I going to get out of this? Yeah, exactly. Oh no. So uh, anyway, if you go down to the Monarch, maybe next week, Ricky Gervais <laughs> playing. That'll be fun. <laughs> for your birthday, a little special Leo Sayer visit for your birthday. Uh, got any presents <laughs> yet? Got any I've got. I've received nothing yet. <clears throat> um, uh, but but then my parents haven't come up, and they're the ones that normally bring gifts. Oh yeah, yeah. But they are coming up later, and I, I always look forward to my um. Father's gifts, yeah, um, because they are remarkable. <laughs> he, I, I don't know what he's thinking sometimes. I, I mean, I don't. It's like I don't understand the logic. I mean, if I explain some of the gifts he's bought in the past, maybe you could figure out. I once opened. I think I was about fourteen, right? And um, I liked all the stuff that you like at fourteen. You know, the ladies, obviously. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, pop music. Yeah, sure, um, sure, sure, uh, sure. You know, fashion. Yeah. And that's why I assume that's why he bought me uh, on audio cassette. The collected wartime speeches of Sir Winston Churchill. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good gift. Did you listen to it? Well, I, I, I'm not sure when you'd ever be in the mood to listen to that. To be honest, fight, we'll fight you on the beaches. Yeah, you know all that. All um, the classics, all the classic I, hits. I don't know. When you listen, I think the unless you're under attack, <laughs> I don't think you'd ever listen to that. <laughs> Did to you honest. not even listen to it? I kind of stuck. But what, what, when are you going to when are you going to be in the mood to put that on? No, but just because it was a gift. But I always remember being once. This was. But what if he tested you? Go work. Uh, you like track four? <laughs> yeah. Oh, some chicken, some neck. Oh, yeah. I love that, Dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think they're doing a remix. But he said to me once. He said to me, "Never forget, son." <laughs> he didn't. Yeah, and I went. I don't. I don't remember, Dad. <laughs> It was mad, and it was like because he was quite into sort of, oh. but he was into like the military and all that kind of and war history oh, and stuff. So are you of... allowed to tell an anecdote about your dad on radio? Can I just give you a clue, just in case? Uh, can you tell the thing about the shed? No, okay. no, 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 right. no, 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 no. Okay, too complicated. Too okay, long. Okay, all right, all right, okay. But um, but I remember this was this was true. I remember we would. It, I had it on once because I sort of I just stuck it on because I thought I ought to. And my dad came and he was like he was pleased to see I was listening to it. And he was like and we just sort of stood there listening. And I was with my sister coming in with one of her quite attractive friends, mm -hmm. teenage friends as well. Like and I'm a teenager as well. And it's like and just just this woman walking by. You know she goes to the same school or whatever. You know quite quite fit. And I'm just stood there with my father listening to we all fight them on the beaches, <laughs> never in the field of human conflict of so many. And just just remember looking at as he passes. Just You've learned it. It's, it's rubbed off. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, is is oh Rick? If you're ever in a war situation and you need some morale, come to me. Yeah, you're just uh, you're right. You're going to tell us a little story about a just Volvo passed estate. my test. Yeah, my parents had a big, big Volvo estate, and there's quite a big oh, car I didn't to drive. Off. My parents didn't have a car. <laughs> But if you, I know you don't drive cars, Rick, no. but it's got a big car to drive if you've just passed your test. It's safe though, isn't it? It apparently. is very safe, that was the thing. Yeah. And uh, I live, come from uh, the West Country, obviously, there's quite a lot of windy yeah, lanes. No, there. you're joking, do you? <laughs> they have cars there. <laughs> well, here he comes. <laughs> Blimey, Carl. Learn on a tractor, automatic it was. Do you want me to tell it or not? Oh! Don't go about the accent! Oh no, I've got a whistle, go on. Oh. oh.
Go on. So I went to this party. You know I'm going being from the north? Not when he's telling an anecdote. He's never telling an anecdote. Oh yeah, fair point. <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, so I went to a party and I was quite excited because I had the car, I had the motor, and there was a chick heading down to the party that I was like, you know, I had my eye on. And yes. I thought, you know, now I've got a car and uh, going to the party, it's going to be amazing, right? <laughs> you glass and eye, various, various friends had said, like, can we get a lift? I thought, yeah, groovy. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, pick yeah, up yeah. the chick as well, who's yeah, a friend yeah, of a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cruising down to the party in the motor, you know, the Volvo estate, and there's nothing sexier than that. You know, slipping a little bit of uh, Billy Joel on the uh, stereo or whatever. Oh, you know, something don't classic. Go, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, um, and maybe it was uh, Billy Ocean. Oh, I, I, had a, I was quite a Billy. Maybe it was face. get out of my dreams, get into my car. Ideally, yeah. So I get to the party, and uh, inevitably it was one of those house parties where the, the chick that I had my eye on, uh, she kind of was chatting to other guys, and she wasn't really paying attention to me, and I, and yeah. I was, I was sort of saying how to get was she again? <laughs> oh, oh, same so, old story. Oh, they make me laugh. They know laugh. how to tease, don't they, they, they the ladies? Oh, who are they kidding? Oh. <laughs> so uh, I'd follow her like a dog, you know, from room to room. Yeah. And uh, watch Quite her Quite literally. Sometimes he was barking. Yeah. <laughs> to, 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 and on. while, uh, you know, just watch her while she talked to other blokes. <laughs> and then, uh, obviously I wasn't, because I, I was driving, I wasn't drinking, so I was not really enjoying myself. And then somebody said, should we go and pick up Vera? And I thought, right, okay. And they went, Steve's got a car, let's all leap in there, we'll go pick up Vera. Mm. And this girl was like up for it as well, so I thought, brilliant, you know, I'll be back in the car with her, you know, away yeah, from yeah, all these, uh, yeah, these yeah, lads. Yeah. One guy she had her eye on, he came as well, I was a little bit annoyed. Yeah. But anyway, he was in the car, so I'm driving down these country lanes, just driving along, and they're directing me, they're saying, go left here, go right. And then suddenly, we stop, and, um, he goes, one of them goes, uh, just drive into that field, this pitch black field, right? And I'm sort of, well, it is my parents' car. Just yeah. drive in the field, Steve. I'm thinking, well, I don't want to, like, not seem like I'm a hard, cool, crazy kind of guy, because the chick's in the car. So I drove the car into the field, they all let out, started running off into the darkness, shouting, Vera, 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 where are you? So I'm just sort of sat there in the car, waiting. Well, wasn't Vera Lynn, was it? Because she likes to hide in fields. <laughs> Bizarrely, it wasn't. Right. It was just, I was just left in the car uh, on my own with uh, Billy Ocean, and uh, suddenly, out of the darkness, they come back holding a Vietnamese pot-bellied pig that they had stole from a, no a, a nearby farm, stole and they knew, that, they knew that the pig uh, was called Vera, because someone knew the farmer or something. Anyway, so they got this pig, so now they're going, I'll oh, put the pig in the back of the car, we'll take it back to the party, it'll be hilarious. I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm not sure I want a pig and all its, you know, piggy crap in the car, right, crammed in there, but they say, yeah, so obviously I'm thinking again, I don't want to look like I'm, you know, a nerd. You know, I'm terrified of that, Rick, ever happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... Yeah. So, uh... So you go, hey, bring the pig into the car. <laughs> exactly. I'm exactly, no nerd. Exactly. Yeah, go on. Um, so now we drive off again. I've got this pig kind of screeching in the back of the car. And, uh, they say, stop again, stop again, let's do some cow tipping. And they do that old thing, you know, about the fact we... Because cows sleep standing up, don't they? So you, you can push a cow over and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so they're having a wild time, hilarious. So this time, uh, now we get to a sort of dead end in the, in the road. And, uh, they say, well, turn around, let's go back to the party. And I'm thinking, fine. Try and do a three-point turn in this very narrow country lane, right? Get the Volvo estate wedged horizontally across the road. Can't get it out, just can't seem to sort it out. I don't know what, I'm just, I'm now I'm panicking because there's a pig in the car, right? And, uh, local disgruntled farmers, right? People drunk, partying, probably off their head on some kind of weed, really. Well, was it loads of blokes with, like, pitchforks and flaming torches <laughs> exactly. going, burn him. <laughs> He's playing with our pig. Exactly that. And, uh, and so that, do you know, I was so terrified that my, well, all I could think was they're gonna have to send a helicopter yeah. to lower a magnet onto the top of the car to lift the car up and put it the right way around. You used to w w read a lot of comics, didn't you? Yeah. 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 So, uh, do you know what I started doing? What? Crying. Did you really? Yeah. Why? So I started crying, just very slightly, started getting upset, and the, the other guy that the girl fancied, he had to get into the driving seat and sort it out for me by oh slowly no. edging forward so and backwards. that's the worst bit of the whole story. Yeah, edging slowly back and forwards, he just sorted it out, just slowly, 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 worked the car back round, and then we were off. You were just gently weeping. Just gently weeping in the, the back. the bloke had just taken the bird that you saw from a distance. <laughs> exactly. That was basically your wife in your head by then. <laughs> oh, yes. Wasn't it? I can't we believe it. We were happily it. married with a pig for a child. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah. joke, that could happen. I know. <laughs> yeah. Listen, let me just tell you briefly, this This is a, another example of, of how people can just exploit you and make fun of you when you're tall. Yeah. Um, I was quite tall, I've always been like about six foot seven for quite a while now. And when I was about 16, um, I went to a, a big New Year's celebration in Bristol where I come from. And they, everyone kind of congregates in this big sort of part of town and there's all people dancing around, like in Trafalgar Square. And um, I was there and I, somehow I sort of, I just picked up a balloon somewhere along the line, one of those kind of helium sort of balloons and I was holding that and sort of dancing around. And um, these two girls came up to me and I was thinking, yeah, okay, you know, it's New Year's Eve, brilliant, you know, that's, uh, that's the, my kind of party. Yeah. And they came up and they went, hey. Once a year. And they went, <laughs> they said, uh, you're going to be here for long? And I went, well, maybe. And they said, it's just that we've arranged to meet back at you <laughs> in about an hour. I went, what do you mean? 
When, well, it's just because we can see you wherever you are. <laughs> Don't worry, you can move around and stuff. We'll see you with the balloon. Just arrange uh, to meet some friends. I here. love that. A landmark. So, like, so pilots use that. Oh, we're just coming in. Uh, there's, uh, we'll be, uh, 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 when we see Steve Merchant, we'll be descending <laughs> to Bristol Temple Mead. What's really funny is New Year's Eve, Trafalgar Square, you've got a huge column, but the use yeah. Steve is like the meeting point. Steve's got a huge column. <laughs> Brilliant, Rick. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Award winning comedy from Ricky Gervais. Rick, I had some devastating news last night. Go on. You know when I left you, I was off to buy a PlayStation 2? Yeah. I just, I was totally in the mood for or it. Or a I, PS2, as he said. Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, which confused him, Grandad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so, uh, you know, I, I think I went yeah. in, like, uh, some electrical stop on, uh, Oxford Street. Yeah. And, uh... So the thing I'll just say, the thing about Steve is, is, uh, I wouldn't say he's mean, he hates that. Um, he's careful, right? And he will, he will spend days to get a pound off. Rick. Go Two on. and a half hours I walked around last no. night. I swear to God, walking to different shops, right? I went from Oxford Street to Piccadilly Circus back again, along the length of Oxford Street back again, all over the place, right? I realised I basically couldn't get a better deal than about 240 quid, right? right. For a, a console and a game. Right. So I ended up in Virgin Mega Store, I bought a, uh, Auto Grand Theft 3 or whatever, yeah. and a PlayStation and a memory card or whatever. So I shoot off and I'm walking off and I'm going to the tube and I walk all the way to HMV, um, <clears throat> on, uh, opposite Bond Street. Sure. And I just popped in there because I'd forgotten to get something. And I went downstairs and I was walking past the, uh, Playstations and it went, if you buy a Playstation 2, you can get Grand Theft Auto 3 with 20 pounds off. Oh. I was absolutely devastated. What did you do? I just, I, 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 I crumbled. I didn't know what to do. I was thinking of taking it back to Virgin Megastore going, it's faulty. Uh, but like oh, no. before, you haven't even got home yet. Oh, I can tell. No, I didn't mean to buy this though. What did you <laughs> buy? Keyboard. <laughs> exactly. I'm buy a... So the problem is when I get it back and I wire it up and that, all I can see is the cars are racing around the track. All I'm thinking is it's like one of those cartoons when a really hungry bloke could just <laughs> see his mate as like a big chicken. <laughs> and all I could see on the TV was just a big 20, 20 pound. pound note just floating. <laughs> It was an absolute oh night. I'm just devastated by it. 20 quid, I could have bought, like, another cheap game for that. We went to the, did I tell you this? Rick, we went, we're, would you give me 20 pounds and then I'll shut up about it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we went to the casino once, a group of us, and I lost about 100 quid, and, uh, it was, it was a, you know, great, it was, it was someone's birthday, uh, I think it was Jane's birthday, and Steve, after three hours of gambling, had lost the 20 pounds he got out to play with, right? I was going, you're really gutted, aren't you? He just went, you, have you any idea how much cheese I could get for £20? Yeah. Cold was... meats. Yeah. For <laughs> £20. And there it is again last night. <laughs> £20. I'm robbed of £20. Literally, they've taken it from my hand. Yeah. The HMV people. I they've can't believe it. They've taken that and they've... I'm going to try and away. think of some things to cheer you up. You were talking about renting an office. I'm a little bit intimidated because I'm just at the moment thinking about trying to buy a flat or something because sure. I'm just tired of pissing money down the drain. I know. Yeah. And, um... Uh, but I'm just, I'm really petrified. I've put it off and put it off because I just, I'm really gullible. I'm just, when I'm in confronted with anyone in a suit who sort of knows what they're talking about, they can sell me anything, I'm intimidated, it's like, you know, you're supposed to go in there and you're supposed to sort of act like you're the guy with the money, you're the, this is what I want, this is what I want, nah, nah, nah. But I go in there and it's like I'm afraid they're gonna say, clear off, I don't wanna, I don't wanna sell you a house. I'm not yeah. interested. Have you ever, have you ever thought of like, really putting on sort of like some sort of cool air? Like, uh, <laughs> sort of like kicking the door and going, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> Is it like, just, you'd be found out in 30 seconds, <laughs> yeah, wouldn't you? Exactly. You'd go in there, you'd stub your toe, and they go, what are you kidding? I can't put my toe, I can't put my toe. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Brilliant. Just tapping yeah. the walls. Yeah, tapping the wall. What's the, uh, what's the rates on? What rates? I don't know. <laughs> well, this is, do you remember, I don't know if I told you before, I went, I wanted to buy a laptop computer. Yeah. And everyone said, uh, go up Tottenham Court Road. And I was reading, like, magazines and stuff. They were saying, haggle. Make sure you haggle. Make sure you got, you're planning to haggle, get the best deal you can. And I found a, a shop which was selling the computer I wanted. And I went in there. And I had this whole plan in my mind of what was going to happen. He was going to say, like, it's worth this. I'm going to go, yeah. well, look, I can get it cheaper here. I want to buy it from you. I'm going to haggle. Da -da. And off I went. So I went in the shop. And uh, I said, yeah, looking for this, uh, interest in this Toshiba. How much is it? He went, oh, it's 1500 quid. I went, sure, sure. Okay. I said, I'll give you 1300. He went, it's 1500. And I said, sure, but I'm willing to give you 1300. He went, 1500. And I was, I was done already because he hadn't even begun to haggle. And I was assuming he'd at least go 1400 and we could start, but nothing. So now I was screwed. My whole plan went out the window. Yeah. Well, I, you just leave. No, I said to him, I said, the thing is, I can get this computer cheaper down the road, but, you know, I like what you're providing there. I like your service. Uh, I've had good, good, good stuff about you. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. I said, I've heard good stuff about you. And he went, I said, uh, seriously, I can walk down the street. I can buy it there for cheap for like 1400. And he went, well, see you later then. And I was like, right. So, <laughs> so I, I walked out the place. I said, well, I'm gonna have to leave then. And I walked out the place, and um, 
Of course, I wanted to get it from there because it was still the cheapest, so I had to walk back in again. I went, yeah, 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 yeah. I've um, I just had some second thoughts. Listen, I'll tell you what. I'll pay the fifteen hundred. Can I get a free carry case? He went, the carry case is free anyway. I said, I'll take it. <laughs> Carrie case is free. No, but how much would you charge for that if it was on sale? <laughs> Carry case a tenner. Well, let's just say it is a tenner. Give it to me for free. And he went, no, it's a tenner. And you went, well, you said it was free a minute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's just pathetic. Yeah, that is lovely. For it's for having to walk out, making a big statement, and then come back in again. Oh. And, oh um, dear. So I just, I'm really scared. I just, I feel like I need someone to come with me and do all the talking. Yeah. Well, no, I just, I, <laughs> I just wanted to mention to you. I went to um, a pub near my. House recently. I found out that there was a a, a pool hall. Oh yeah, join, like a pool club there. And I love pool. I love. I, you know, I, I like to think of myself as looking a little bit like Paul Newman in The Hustler yeah. when I'm shooting pool. Yeah. And um, I, I went down there. And my, I went with my flatmate, and uh, it's quite a seedy pub in many respects. There's a lot of weird people in there, like alcoholics. And why did they know, go there? It's strange, isn't it? Weird. <laughs> go on. And um, very very odd people. And um, so he's a little bit nervous, and he said, "I'm a bit worried because there's a lot of kind of you know, there's people from the estate, the sure. nearby council estate, you know, yeah, yeah. for want of a better word, scum, you know." <laughs> <laughs> and um, so he's a bit edgy, and uh, bizarrely, because I, I saw what other people, I said to him, um, he went, "I'm a bit scared about going in." I went, "Don't worry, you're with me." Yeah. I don't know what. I, think, I don't know what that means. They're yeah. gonna think, "Oh wait a minute, the six foot guy with the, the lanky guy with the glasses, yeah. not gonna mess with him." They, they, you go there, they take your glasses off, and you go, "I've lost." <laughs> exactly. That's this it. Is, I'm out of here. This is why I've never got into a fight because if, if my glasses are gone. I'm you, screwed. That's the first. Are you really, you're really gone short sighted, aren't you? I'd be absolutely done for. And are you nervous without? Are you sort of like nervous yes. without them? You know, what, whenever you, you, you know, whenever you see like a, a kind of action film or whatever, or maybe like a horror film, the nervous nerve glasses, nerve glasses, and he's scrabbling around on the floor. Is that you? Is it? Coming behind them. That's me. Really? Yeah, done for. Absolutely done for. What well, uh, What did you do when you were at school when you had to play tennis or football, or rugby, or something? Um, kept them on. That's dangerous. Well, of isn't course it? it is. That's why I was never, you know, as good at rugby as I probably could have been. <laughs> you know, because of course you can. How can you play rugby with glasses on? I mean, the scrub going, careful! <laughs> <laughs> your boots! Hello! Yeah. Never mind me, nads. Exactly. <laughs> Watch my glasses. <laughs> but, uh, so I went in that, because I used to, um, I used to do uh, judo when I was very young. Well, that's the impossible. But this is ludicrous. That must go got... falling off. Oh, of course. What about gaffer tape? Just sort of like just, round. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Well, I, so... did, I bought something like a kind of a sports strap to keep them on, and they just it just pushed them right into my eyes. I could barely see. Uh -huh. I was all blinded. <laughs> <laughs> but I swear, when I used to go to judo, I'm sure that the other kids were being taught. Right, just knock Steve's glasses off. <laughs> knock his glasses off. You can get him. <laughs> oh, and, dear. Um, and uh, so I, I'm always a bit edgy about fights, but for some reason I felt super confident going in there. I was like, I swaggered in and uh, into the pool hall. And it's one of those places you've got to sort of knock. It's like a speakeasy. You've got to knock yeah. and they open the door and you come in. Yeah. And um, uh, I'm in there and uh, my flat. <laughs> yeah, one of those things you slide, uh, like a little letterbox, and you exactly. slide over. And you knock, knock, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you put your face down, you just knocked your glasses off. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> and uh, so I went in there and um, in a way, my flatmate was justified in being a little bit edgy because um, the conversation we could overhear uh, the table next to us, we were playing pool, the guy next to us was going, um, yeah, of course, the bloody police spent Boxing Day in the Nick. Absolute nightmare. <laughs> you getting nervous? So I was getting a little bit edgy because I didn't know, but I, then I thought, you know, they don't mess with their own. We're yeah. like, we're almost like gangsters ourselves because we're there in the lion's yeah, yeah. den, do you know what I mean? We'll probably be fine. So then, um, there's just an old guy serving at the bar, you know, in his fifties, and some guys go over to the jukebox, some young kids, they're just hanging out in the pool hall, they're pretty cool, they put some money in the jukebox, and in first track, Coldplay, fine, I'm thinking that's nice, I'm playing pool, second track, hardcore German techno, <laughs> and they, and they put in about 50 quids worth, it seemed, because it just went on, oh, <laughs> oh, really thumping, kind of like Gabba stuff, <laughs> old guy at the bar just <laughs> nodding his head, cleaning the glass. Yeah. yeah. So into this- Piano come, player, furious. Exactly. <laughs> into this comes- like what appeared to be a family of holiday makers with kids. So they've entered this like CD pool hall. Um, we've got, you know, the Cray twins playing pool next to me. They come in, the German techno's blaring. They come in, and there's like kids, you know, and they've got the baby in one of those little pouches, and they, oh, kind of, yeah. they sit down. And um, the weirdest thing was one of the kid, one of the guys, the uncle, let's say, of the, of the family, he picked up the kid, and he put, he was about to put the baby down in a chair. And I thought, hang on, that's quite, it's quite, quite a hard backed chair. And as he did it, the baby's head just went <laughs> and hit the back of the chair. <laughs> and I uh, just flipped back and hit the back of the chair because he just lumped it down. Oh, in the God. Head. And it started screaming, it crying, you know, and the um, teenagers were rocking to that. They loved it, and um, and then he came over, and and 
he was being transparent what had happened, and the mum was going, what's happened? The baby's crying. And he went, I don't know what happened. <laughs> and I wanted to lean over and go, you lying swine! <laughs> you, you know what happened? When you just hear yourself? I wanted to go, just take her aside and say, never let him handle your baby again. No, the head was wobbling the around. Was wobbling he put it on just head, I could see it come in. I don't know, yeah. who knows, you might turn out like Carl now. I, uh, that's a point. But oh. what do you do in those situations? You know, do, do you- well, the, I, I'm assuming, by the way, you're taking it lightly, the baby wasn't hurt in any way, the just made his- Well then- But it was still a bit wrecked. you keep so. out of it, don't you? I what are you gonna so. do? Call the authorities and go, it was him? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I don't know, I mean, I don't want to name the place in case I get knifed. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I imagine you trying to swagger it when you overheard him drop the neck. I imagine you know me going, yeah, pigs. Sorry? <laughs> yeah, I ain't the pigs as well. No, I'm a lawyer. I was down there going, <laughs> exactly. oh yeah, oh yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> oh dear. But, so, um, uh, I'll be going back there. I so, feel like I'm that's it. I mean, I've told you before, Steve, stay away from working class people and bad men in trainers. Because, you know, you hang on with nerdy wells and you're going to get your glasses knocked off. <laughs> that's true. Can I, um. <laughs> You can borrow it. Can I, I don't know if you, I don't know who you're talking to someone. I spoke to Richard Wilson from, uh, One Foot in the Grave. I, I spoke to him. Yeah, but he's a lovely bloke. He's yeah. a really nice guy, but he said to me, uh, he said, uh, could you, could, could I, uh, do a cameo in the office for 40,000 pounds? <laughs> and I went, could, like, Ricky do, like, an amusing pratfall or something? And then you just come in as a cleaner and go, I don't believe it. And he looked at me like, like, why have you said that? Why oh, have you brought no. that? It was, I felt so guilty. Oh no! I, was, I, was so, I so wanted to apologise. But why is it this? We know it's wrong. To I do don't that. know why I said it. We, I don't we know. know why do, I said do, it. It, do we think? No, it's different for me. Exactly. I'm we're a, in the business. I, I do a new twist on. Yeah. I don't believe it, and they go. You know, that's the best. <laughs> I don't believe <laughs> it. it twist I've, I've ever heard. I don't know what I was oh. thinking. Why did you? I was oh, so you didn't tell me that. I know. I felt ashamed. I felt really ashamed. Oh no! I was a little bit drunk. I wasn't thinking straight. Oh, it was so no. embarrassing. I was talking to a friend of mine who said, uh, who was it? I can't remember, was it? He said that he was watching a new, it was, um, it was a sports cast, which it may have been, uh, um, Formula One racing or something like that. And he was, and there was a commentator, and he's, you know, the commentators have got to keep talking all the time. Yeah. And he was going, and there's, uh, there's, uh, there's the, uh, team there. Oh, we're good to see so and so's girlfriend in the audience. And uh, he said he saw, and it cut to Richard Wilson in the audience, and he went, and the bloke went, and there's one foot in the grave. <laughs> He knew he had to say it then, but he couldn't remember oh. his name or the character. Oh, that's fantastic! And there's one foot in the <laughs> Oh, dear. That'd be brilliant. And there's the office. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> what you're you're putting us alongside one foot in the grave thing that's been going like ten years and one of those. What you're you're putting us alongside. It beat us, Steve. Get over it. It <laughs> beat us in the comedy awards. No, I was just saying that you're an identifiable face if you're at a Formula One event. You okay. know, old. <laughs> Grumpy. One foot in the grave. Yeah, one foot in the grave, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, Carl, any thoughts before we move on? Yeah. Um, we're talking about children in need, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. And, um, Carl, what's wrong He's just got it. He's just got it. He's just got it. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about children in need earlier, and, uh, as I say, I'm not a fan of it. And I, this is a couple of years ago, I was working, um, and we I had to drive up to, uh, to Blackpool. Oh, yeah. And so, we, it was Comet Relief Night, it was a Friday night, and we were listening to all the different kind of BBC radio stations, because they all cover Comet Relief, they all sort of link up as one big yeah. thing. And, uh, I think this was maybe like, sort of, I don't know, BBC Solly Hull or something. And, uh, they, they've always got like, they've got this, this one guy in the studio doing all the DJing, and, um, there's some bloke who's sort of outside the BBC with some kids and whatever else, um, kind of doing a live link up. And the guy outside was Steve Baxter, I forget the name of the DJ inside. I love the fact you remember this man's name. Well, it's important because, uh, we're listening, and the guy in the studio, he's the and he's chatting away and he's going, got a signed picture, uh, signed picture here of uh, the Spice Girls, uh, all the girls have signed that. Uh, so the highest bidder gets to win that and you have that. And, uh, um, I seem to have run out of words. <laughs> he just said, I seem to have run out of words. And we were like listening, like, okay. And he just went, I seem to have run out of words. I wonder if Steve Baxter's got any for me. <laughs> And Steve Baxter was just outside, like, obviously not, not <laughs> ready, just going... Didn't have any words either? I, yeah, no words. Well, he's got all the words, then. <laughs> it was wordless. I don't believe it. He's probably used up too many words in the first hour. Exactly. He just used all the words up. And he didn't want to repeat himself. Exactly. So he just thought, that, that's it. There's a hideous blunder. So we were, um, we were, we were enjoying that and the work of Steve Baxter. And uh, we were driving along, and then we were driving and we got stuck in this, just jam on the way up to Blackpool. And I saw this kind of white Mercedes, like, a couple of them. I thought, it looks quite swank, you know, and I'm, uh, swank. <laughs> and I drove up, we were driving up behind it. And the number plate was something, like, I can't remember exactly, but I think it was something like Orv 1. I'm thinking, interesting, Orv 1, you know. So we're driving alongside, who is driving? No, actually it wasn't a driver, it was, there was a guy driving it, in the front seat, asleep. Green Dog. Keith Harris. Really? Keith Harris was there, 
Orville, as I recall, on the back seat. Oh no! I couldn't believe it. Yeah, was asleep or? <laughs> I think he was asleep. Just knackered. I didn't- I didn't see Cuddles, the crazy monkey. I suspect- he, I imagine he would have popped up at some point, just kind no, of annoying the driver's uh, hair, you've just got, kind of you, crazy. Yeah, you've got- uh, I think Cuddles has to go in the boot. He's got to go in the boot, because he caused havoc. Yeah, and he-, he, he must, no, Knowing Cuddles, he'd put his hands over the driver's eyes, exactly, jumping around. Causing but, all kinds of trouble. But the, the thing is, he doesn't understand road safety, to be- to be fair. <laughs> well, he's a monkey. Yeah, yeah. He's a monkey, and he's got and, a lisp. And not even- <laughs> not even a real one, at that. Yeah. I had a couple of drinks. Yeah. I was down at Steve's night. Doing, yeah. He was doing a bit of DJ. Yeah. Went down the store. And that's why you're all grumpy. Shh, 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 shh. What? Do you hear what he just said? What? I was DJing last night. Obviously that like... XFM evening. Yeah. Yeah. Hour and a half. My friend and I split the time on the decks. Yeah. What? What was the word you just used? He went down a storm. We went down a storm. Right. Three girls. I was walking to the toilets uh, during my set. Three girls went. You are a genius. <laughs> right. D uh, what's his name? Dane Bowers. Yeah, Zane Lowe. Because you played records in a certain order. Yes. <laughs> no, sorry, Rick. Sorry, Rick, if you can't deal with that. Sorry if you're a little bit jealous because this time you can't share the award. <laughs> oh All right. dear! It's but it was my uh, credit this you time. You can tell uh, he hasn't been a DJ because uh, it's, it's not just about. It's not just about that. The songs you play. It's the way you play them. Oh the yeah. The way you play them, whether right. it's 33 or 45, <laughs> yeah, very yeah. important. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> leave your hand on exactly. them as they're trying to go round. But uh, but so, so three girls there, yeah. charmed by me. They loved it. Yeah. Um, Zane Lowe, XFM mm. DJ and MTV presenter, probably one of the coolest blokes alive. He came yeah. up, gave us massive respect. <laughs> he said, I'm loving your set. He actually used those words, right? <laughs> there were people coming up, they couldn't believe their luck. It was yeah. roaring. We'd stick on a track, people yeah. would cheer as it came on, right? Yeah. My particular favourite, Carl, I think you'll agree, my particular triumvirate, LL Cool J, Mama Said Knock You Out, yeah. leading straight into House of Pain, Jump Around, then straight into that current Elvis track that's been re-released, remixed by Junkie XL. I played the original, which I'd already played on XFM before. I'm already there, cutting edge. Yeah. Right? Three, what, three old tracks, you mean? Three old tracks. In a row? Yep. And, yes. um, what, well, I think the words that would best sum it up are, I kicked ass. <laughs> yeah. What about, are you, are you a fan of any of the great English operas? <laughs> like, um, the Pirates of Penzance? <laughs> yeah. Gilbert and <laughs> Sullivan. <laughs> to me, Gilbert and Sullivan were like, the probably, their, their day equivalent of like Richard Stilgo getting together with Tony Slattery. <laughs> And then a hundred years later, people go, it's brilliant. It, it is like, they might as well, um, I don't know, make th any, any episode of Whose Line Is It Anyway? Right, yeah. Into an opera. And in 200 years' time, we're going, that's genius. Yeah. Listen to this one, look, this is Party Quirks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Am Dram Society. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah. we're a step. <laughs> Because oh. I, I was, well, I was oh. in the Pirates of Penzance once in an amateur production. You used to like whose lines it anyway. I did. That was Although the I did watch scenes. it when it first came on Channel Four about yeah. 15, 20 years ago. But we um, we did the Pirates of Penzance when I was in an amateur dramatic society in Bristol, uh, the Bristol Opera Society, Light Opera Society. I don't know why I was involved because I can't sing. My audition. <laughs> I thought this is how desperate they were for blokes. I swear to God, right? I can't sing. You know? Were you? Yeah. Well, all right, calm down. And, um, <laughs> I, uh, I went in and they said, so what are you gonna sing? I went, uh, well, I, I just, I don't, I, I wanna surprise you. They said, do you want a piano accompaniment? I said, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I went to the back, I swear to God, I went to the back of the room and I just sang, Thumbelina, Thumbelina, tiny little thing. Thumbelina, dance. Thumbelina, sing. Thumbelina, what's the difference if you're very small? Cause when your heart is full of love, you're six feet tall. I just did that. And they just looked at me like I was the weirdest freak uh, they'd ever had. Uh, Immediately put me in the chorus, because they, that uh, was how desperate they were for blokes. We yeah. staged it, we rehearsed it, I couldn't remember the lyrics. <laughs> Thank God you were doing Thumbelina. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but they couldn't, I couldn't, um, I, you know, I couldn't remember the lyrics. What was it for? Was it Gilbert and Sullivan? It was, it was the Pirates of Penzance. Oh. There weren't enough blokes, right, so that we had to double up. So some of the pirates <laughs> had to double up as the policemen who were chasing the pirates. Little bit problematic in the scene when the policemen and the pirates have a fight. <laughs> That was a little bit tricky. <laughs> and the worst thing, so there's this sequence where, like, the, the sort of the daughters of the Major General all kind of like, oh, beautiful, something like, you know, um, oh, beautiful little girls are we, da la 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 la. And the women they had, they must have all been over 40. I mean, yeah. real kind of oh. toothless crones oh. creeping around in their nighties. Is it the sort of women that buy one of those sort of porcelain dolls? Exactly. From the and go, yeah. look, I've had a baby. It's not a real baby. <laughs> it is a real baby. <laughs> I'm gonna stab you. Yeah. One of those. Exactly. It's the sort of women that you'd see maybe on uh, TV
Stevie's Bargain Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> the kind of contestants you get on there. Those are women who, who sort of very nam drama and they, they think they've clung on to their looks, but they oh. have never made it in, in, uh, the guy who was playing the, uh, there's a guy who's supposed to be an eighteen year old prince, an uh, eighteen year old pirate, uh, the pirate king, he must have been forty <laughs> things a day. He also directed this show though, so he got to prance around in these thigh high boots. <laughs> Ludicrous. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> it was shameful, really. I'd I love to go to Am Am Drama is a whole other world. It's just, it's such an incredible place. Because there's so much backbiting and envy and- Really? Oh, it's incredible. I mean, it's worse than the real world of theatre and TV. It's unbelievable. Because the same old people get to do it every year because they can hold a note. No, I've got a list here, because we went to, um, this award ceremony in the week, um, uh, we were up for an award. Well, let yeah. me, I have to explain it to Carl, because, uh, basically we were up for an award, and it's called the, the, it's the Trick Awards. Now, Trick stands for, uh, Television and Radio Industries Club Annual Awards, right? We'd it's never heard of it either. We'd never heard of it. It's some kind of, like, television radio, uh, industry club. Right. Yeah, that's the clue, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so, um, but uh, we don't want to, I'm not trying to slag off the award, because no. it was, you know, it was, it was a big thing and they really made an effort and it was really nice, food was brilliant, it was at the Grosvenor House Hotel, really nice do and, you know, lots of industry people in that there, it was really classy. We got there nice and early, so, yeah. you know, yeah. we were there for a good four yeah. hours before we had fun. to sit down. And, <laughs> but it was just kind of surreal, it was just a bit weird, because it was packed with the cream, I mean, literally the cream, big names, you know, uh, Martin Kemp, one of the first people I saw, you know, came in, like, big TV, radio, industry names, on-screen talent, behind-the-scenes people. People. John Barnes. Barnes was there. Um, Beadle was there. Sir Cliff Richard was there. Yeah. Right. Anyway, so it, it, the, the voice comes on and says, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the chairman of the president, the, the president of the, the uh, Trick Awards. And we had to g stand up, all of these people had to stand up and give a standing ovation as he walked to his table to Tom O'Connor, former presenter of Crosswits. You are joking. No. He's the president. And he came out, he told a few gags, sort of like, it was like straight away, it was you know, old school stuff. You want to thank the ladies, because, you know, it was nothing without the ladies, all the lovely ladies here. And we're waiting for a joke? No. Nope. <laughs> just, th just thanking the ladies. Well, you're forgetting that just prior to that, he, uh, he said grace. Oh, he said grace. Before we ate. Right? It's me, it was me, Steve, and Ash, you know, our producer, the little, um, disabled fella, right? And he's, he's there in his wheelchair, and there's me and Steve. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're standing up during oh, no, grace. Can I just stop you there? Go on. Saw someone in the week, <laughs> and, um... Sorry, did we he... bore you? <laughs> <laughs> You just reminded me then about the Go little on. producer who yeah. was in a wheelchair. Yeah. Last week you said blah blah blah, and our producer who's in a wheelchair got a text from someone saying, "What's happened to you?" They thought you were talking about me. Oh really? Oh. So yeah. Oh. You, you're, you're handicapped in a different way. <laughs> so go on. <laughs> and uh, Tom O'Connor, he said, uh, uh, "Thank you, God, for." We thought yeah. this was a joke initially. We thought it was going to be like a kind of cheeky gag. That's why. We, that's why we were laughing. Out loud. <laughs> that's why we were laughing raucously. <laughs> <laughs> we went anyway, and then he went. I thank you for this. Uh, and uh, and help those who walk alone. And Ash went. What about those that don't walk at all? <laughs> he said, "I've never been. I've never been left out of grace before." <laughs> so, but we had to. And we had to have kind of like bowed our heads slightly, you know. And uh, did we say amen? I know that we were sort of. A lot of people did. I'm pretty sure. Cliff, I, didn't. I think, probably ch chimed in there. Yeah, and he so, sang it. Yeah, exactly. So, um, like Mariah Carey. So anyway, so but before again, you see, what Ricky's forgotten is before Tom took to the stage. This guy walks up there, I don't know who he is, says, there's a lot of people here this, this afternoon, you know, it's a wonderful uh, event, but of course there's a load of celebrities as well. He said, thank you for all the celebrities that have turned up. And then he went, table 77, Mr. Russ Abbott, and we all round of applause. We, can we have the spotlight there? Russ Abbott, by the way, smoking a pipe. I'm um, absolutely brilliant. He looked like, uh, a bit like, um, uh, Barrett Holmes, <laughs> the hilarious Sherlock Holmes character. Then he went, table 107. The cast of Bad Girls. Clap. We'll have to clap. And then he went, <laughs> table five, Alice Beer. Clap. Slightly smaller clapping. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, and I thought, well, when is this gonna- uh, He went through every single celebrity in the room. And there were about, you know, a hundred. Table 53, John Inman, everyone. It's John Inman, round of applause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, table 70, Mr. Simon Cowell. Boo. Yeah, there was there was booing no. there, and yeah. they all booed him. That was nice. Yeah, there was a joke, ironic booing, I think. Could the cheer for Foxy? Was he on the table? <laughs> and we didn't I see Foxy. Foxy wasn't there. He was doing his show when they went up. They won an award. Cowell and uh, Waterman and Chapman. Table uh, forty-three. Peter Sissons, everyone. Peter Sissons <laughs> went through every single name. Ricky got so paranoid they might mention him that we we kind of legged it upstairs and we're watching from the balcony as they shone the spotlight on our table. <laughs> <laughs> and it was yes. empty. <laughs> that was particularly fun. <laughs> But, uh, then at the end, Sir Cliff got up there, right, because Sir Cliff was giving out the, um, the Lifetime Achievement Award, right, he gets up, he used to speak to you, because oh, this is a personal friend of mine, a seven days a week friend, Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Mrs. Gloria Hunniford, 
Right, we immediately start thinking what exactly were her lifetime achievements. I think living that long. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I don't know what is she's done, Gloria Hunford. I don't know what she does. I don't exactly, you know, I know she's done Radio 2, so I don't think that's We're not dissing her, we're not dissing no, anyone. Good luck we're to not her. taking the mick out of anyone, but, you but, know. Uh, but anyway, it was she... just a strange, it was just a strange event. But Gloria got taken unawares by this and started to ad lib a speech, right? And I swear to God, about 12 minutes in, she was telling us how, and I can repeat, I can tell you now if you're interested, her lovely daughter Karen is currently in Australia, is partly work, is partly a holiday, Carl, and she's having a whale of a time, but she's not spoken to her for ages. And then she went, she went, actually she's been there for a long time. Yeah. She, and it's like, I was thought she was going to go, she doesn't call, you yeah. do that, you get a blue Peter, and this is how she <laughs> We thought she was going to get award. photos out, maybe, start showing it. it no, was it, was very, it was a nice bizarre. event, and, uh, you know, everyone there, Henry Coop was there. So Henry <laughs> it was so good because every was... single element as well was sponsored by someone. Yeah. And I was looking at the menu, I've got the programme here, and the menu, right, the pudding is sponsored by Electrolux. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you ever had a pudding sponsored by yeah. Electrolux. I was sponsored by Zanussi. You played a beautiful song there. Uh, yeah, it was thanks. a song for the lovers. Yeah. And, uh, it, you know, I, I do get depressed when I see people around me who've got, you know, girlfriends, and right. I think, you know, because I haven't, and I just think, like, what, what, what's the rule, you know? We mentioned last week that fat bloke from, from Pop Idols. <laughs> He's got a bird, which annoys me, angers me. <laughs> and, um, this really depressed me. Uh, walking into Piccadilly Circus Tube a couple of nights ago, homeless guy, wrapped up, unwashed, <laughs> and, uh, northern. <laughs> and, uh, he's been spoken to by some kind of carer, you know, some worker who'd come out to dish out kind of stale sandwiches. And I just overheard as I was passing him going, well, of course, it's very difficult maintaining a long distance relationship. <laughs> 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 and I sort of, like, kind of lingered for a bit. I was thinking, what? And he was going, yeah. And, it, and I could, basically, I pieced together that he's got a girlfriend. He's from Leeds. He's got a girlfriend who's also homeless, who's homeless up in Leeds. And occasionally she kind of homelesses her way all the way I to I love London. the fact that he's travelled to be homeless. I know. Pathetic. Oh, it angered me that they, is there, they a lot, is, there a, is there a lot of cheap housing in Leeds? Well, that, yeah. that, that ruined it for him. But I, it just was, I assume maybe she was squatting or something. <laughs> but it was like, and it just depressed me because it was like, not only is he sort of, is he homeless, but he's got a homeless girlfriend, but the, the homeless people are finding love. Yeah. Do you mean it's so, I mean, that's really depressing, Carl, isn't it? Unless they both became smack Carl, together or No, whatever. Carl's found love on the street before, haven't you? No, well, I, uh, I went to, to the cinema a while back to see Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Oh, yeah. That art house film. And, um, a woman sat next to me, huge, fat blubber of a woman. Well, she's, it's up to her. She's earned enough money. She can eat more than she needs. Sure, but don't squeeze into a seat next to me in the cinema, <laughs> right, with your flesh, you know, curving over the armrest that we're having to share. Oh, right, God. next to her, a little we weasel of a husband. She's got one of those huge, kind of, um, yeah, hog sized barrels of popcorn. <laughs> you don't reckon he was one of them feeders? It was very similar. It oh. really was. She's, she's, she, as you say, she's chowing down on the, uh, on the popcorn. She is one of those women who, uh, she's not come out to see a film, she's come out to eat, and if a film happens yeah. to be showing, then she'll watch it. Yeah. Really winds me up. He's got the hot dog and everything. She's eating, and now popcorn already annoys me because and I she goes to him, are you gonna eat that? He goes, well, I was thinking of it, you're gonna eat to me, you're gonna eat to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know why it was that popcorn became the thing you eat in the cinema. It's like you say, you've made these films, and someone's there thinking, well, we've made this great film, we've got the sound mix right, but what we need is something that will just slightly uh, irritate everyone yeah. during uh, the film. And just see the, the size, the just see the size of the buckets they yeah. go in their popcorn. But and why not serve soup or something? Or, or yogurt? Oh, the slurping would drive me mad. But and and the spoon touching the, the, the bottom of the thing would drive me mad. Don't serve anything. There's no reason you have to do this in my go, oh God, I need to eat. Well, this eat, was- plan it. You don't, you don't go and play tennis eating what you, you plan it, don't you? Well, what? exactly. <laughs> exactly. Eat before you come out. Yeah. Have a sandwich, have a corned beef sandwich. Do you know what, right, what annoyed me is I found out in, in uh, across America when they showed Schindler's List, they banned popcorn, yeah. right? Out of respect to the film. What, so they're saying all the other films, oh, sod it, yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, this one cost hundred million. Ah, it doesn't matter. You can eat popcorn through that. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, ban it through all films. Well, this woman was one of those ones, she may as well have had a trough <laughs> in front of her. <laughs> I mean, she was a state, right? Oh, and she's doing God. It. She's an idiot as well. Because the trailer comes from, I remember at the time, the trailer came on for AI, that film AI. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I don't know if you've seen the trailer for it, but it's something like, I don't know exactly, but it's something like, uh, um, Martin is a, uh, six-year-old boy. Yeah, he's, 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 he's 20 he's, kilograms, yeah, he's, he's three foot high, yeah. He's, 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 but he is, but he is not human. Yeah. He's a robot. Yeah. And she's watching, she's just, go, she's just watching that, right? Bear in mind, the point of the trailer, he's a robot. Yeah. She says, how old was he again? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to slap her. I was livid. I went, he's a robot. He's a robot. That's what's important. 
She, she's a, a, a trailer came <laughs> on for a war film, she goes, I shan't be seeing that. She just announces it, I shan't be seeing that. And I'm bored with war films. <laughs> bored with them next. Oh, God. And, tra- and then, so the, um, the, the title card comes up for Crash and Tiger, Hidden Dragon. You know, like, at the beginning, they yeah. do everything. Yeah. It comes up, Crash and Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Now, she's in the cinema, she goes, what a stupid name for a film. <laughs> I was thinking, but you paid to see it. And, and then oh. it says subtitles in brackets. She goes, oh, it's not subtitled, is it? <laughs> so it comes on, and I think, I, in in the film, I think they speak maybe Mandarin or, or Chinese or something. I'm not sure, but, but let's say it's Mandarin. So they come on, they start, and it's all subtitled, and they start speaking in this, uh, in this, uh, Mandarin or, or Chinese. And, uh, she just starts going, I think Cheng Chong, I think Cheng Chong. I think Cheng Chong, Cheng Chong. In the cinema, just saying that out loud. No. Like, she and her boyfriend are cracking up. They're weeping with laughter, right? And I'm trying He's to watch He's got to laugh, film. otherwise she bites him. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so I'm actually, I'm so livid, so I really make a show of getting up with all my stuff, I get up and I kind of clamber over some of the seats. Yeah. I sit down next to these two teenage girls with the mobile phone. Oh, God. The mobile phone goes off, and like you say, instead of, I mean, it should have been off anyway. Yeah, of course. But let's say, instead of it being, uh, instead of immediately thinking, oh God, and, and switching it off hurriedly, they take the call in the cinema. I'm in the cinema. Yeah, no, I'm in a little start having a conversation. Uh, and I was thinking to myself, I was thinking, you're 16, unless that is your business partner in Hong Kong phoning you, <laughs> saying the deal is not gonna go through, which I suspect it's not. I suspect it's probably Gareth, or Gavin, <laughs> or your boyfriend Tony saying, do you wanna do me behind the bike sheds later? <laughs> yeah. I suspect that's who it is. Yeah. Switch off the phone, or very least, get out. I know. Get out of the cinema. But it just, I, I can't, I mean, I don't know where these people were brought up or raised. I don't know who it was that, that told them this was this was this was behaviour that you but could do. I, 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 I really want to have cinema police. Yeah. Right. You go in there, and if the, they, you, if the phone goes off, you get your money back, and you're asked to leave yeah. straight away. Straight away. Any whispering, go. If you whisper again, you know. Yeah. If you're too stupid to be able to, to figure to, it out. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, they they tell you what age you should be. Right to get that film. Yeah, that's it. If you listen and you're not eating and you're not talking, then you should be able to get a film. Well, I I was in the cinema last night and as I came in, there was a big queue. And as I came in, there was people there uh, taking a ticket, showing you to your seat. Now, wh- when did it happen that I was no longer able to find my own seat at the cinema? Why is it that I can go in the daytime, I can find my, I'm left to fend for myself, but now it seems that on a Friday night no. there's so many stupid people out no, there who can't th- find I, their I decent that, seat. No, I think that is policing. I think that's to stop people thinking I'll just sit here and having to deal with it themselves. Because mm. I mean, uh, if someone was in my seat, even if I, there was another seat, I'd go, well no, that's mine. I, mm. I, I, mm. I want lots of, I want lots of policing yeah. in social occasions. I, I want uh, to go into a pub and go, that is too loud, that music. Those people are too annoying, they're standing up, they're too annoying. I remember being in the cinema once and seeing a guy, he was a big fat guy again, he had popcorn, the hot dogs, the coke, right, and he had it balanced on this little wall that was, uh, uh, sort of separating parts of the cinema, and he was, you know, he had it, he was a big fat guy, you know, just sat there, I was watching, I think it was Beetlejuice I was watching, right. and, uh, some, uh, some local hard nuts, they were on the same row, they started kicking the little wall to, try to and knock, knock his off. food off, and I thought, brilliant. <laughs> oh, no! I think you want to bully fat people. Yeah. But, uh, uh, Rick, 30, I just, mean, 30, I just need to mention something quickly to you. Um, w- when did I last see you? I saw you yesterday, didn't I? Yeah. Um, cause we went up to Edinburgh yesterday, we were, we were very nicely, uh, invited to go and talk at the, uh, Edinburgh International Television Festival, it was yeah. quite a big deal, we went up there and we were interviewed. And uh, Ricky chose to go on the train, cause it takes like four hours, is it four and a half hours or something on the train? Yeah. But it's quite leisurely, it's quite sort yeah. of gentlemanly thing to do. Yeah. I opted to go for the plane option yeah. and fly up there. More modern. Exactly, and, uh, and they, they bankrolled that, they paid for it all, and yeah. uh, that was all not very nice. And, uh, and as I recall, when I last saw you, uh, we got cabbed, we and, and you asked if you could get the cab to drop you off at the train station. Yeah. And then it took me on to the airport. Yeah. Um, did I, now that was, that was before, I, the last time I saw you was before I got to the airport and missed my flight, wasn't it? Because really? I, because I had to drop you off That's in the centre of town. Yeah, no, that, that was, so that was just before I had to pay £165 to upgrade to another How ticket. How did you not tell me that in the last hour? £165, Ricky. I had to pay because we dropped you off at the train station. So, I mean, do you want to go halves on that? Or what do you want to, how do you want to deal with that? How do you want to sort that whole, that whole mess out? Why were you late? Why, why was I late? Because yeah. we dropped you off in the centre of Edinburgh, and yeah, you know how hard it is to get out of Edinburgh in rush hour traffic? But it was only, it was only three minutes away, so you'd no, have missed it anyway. No, because if we'd gone the other direction, it would have been twenty minutes. It took me like an hour to get to the tr- to the airport. And I got there, and the plane had already left, <laughs> and the cabbie was just laughing. He was saying, we're never gonna make it. He goes, you were a religious man, you better start praying. I thought he was being facetious. He was absolutely right. A hundred and sixty-five pounds. But hold on, why didn't he tell you that when he, when, when he picks up a well, quarter past four? It makes you wonder. So obviously, li- I'm a little bit annoyed. 
Because you know I'm not a man who likes to sort of spend unnecessarily. But wait, but wait, well, this is not my fault. Because you were there when we made that decision. I didn't impose this on you. We both decided that might be. It. It's both our fault. I mean, it's no no one's fault. It's both our fault. Is that <laughs> fair? That's all I wanted to hear. It's both our fault. Therefore, it's both our financial obligation. No. Hundred sixty-five pounds. Just split that in half. <laughs> write a check, Rick. Write a check. It's fine. I'll <laughs> yeah. I said, I trust you. <laughs> you know. Um, phone in. Uh, I think everyone. This. This You're is. You're clearly obvious. irresponsible. No, of course I'm not. If you if you share a cab and then one person's lucky enough to not be late and one person is unlucky enough and that's what it is. Bad luck. I don't think you share the obligation. But phone, it's, just, a mor it's a moral dilemma. This isn't it. But it's more than that, though, isn't Go it? On, because what? let's be honest. What? Um, even if you had known that it, I was gonna get there late. You'd have wanted me to hang around just so you weren't left around waiting for a train on no, the No, because you get bored sitting no, there. So you'd have wanted me to at least got in that car. I got there you. way too early. I right. actually got there about I was there about thirty minutes. Oh, so early. you made it fine then. That was well, that exactly. Was so I mean, I did. I I, I sacrificed <laughs> me hanging around for half an hour so you could get it at quarter past four. And the other thing is this: you were gonna get it at quarter past four anyway. Yeah, but, but I would- if I'd gone the other direction and not dropped you off in the centre, I would have been there in well, time. Well, would we? Would we? Well, Is that yes. true? Well, only God knows. Well, and the cabbie. <laughs> <laughs> what I mentioned it to. <laughs> so, uh, I'll tell you what'll cheer you up. I'll tell you what's better than 80 quid. I'll tell you what's better than shall I? <laughs> Go on. Uh, music. What, are you paying the whole 165? <laughs> no, listen. I just was wondering, because obviously I, I've had an exciting week, relatively speaking, Rick, because yeah. uh, instead of just spending it all with you, yeah. sat in a little room, yeah. um, <laughs> as is our way, yeah. I've been doing some acting this week, as you I know. know. I know. And I don't normally act, uh, but I, um, basically uh, there's some people at the BBC who are making a, a comedy pilot, kind of comedy TV show, and, uh, you know, and I auditioned for it, and the role was uh, to play a sort of freaky looking, sort of lanky geek, you know, and I don't want to say- How did you beat off I you? don't want to say an arrogant Rick, but they gave me the job on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it was like you know. I mean, obviously, I'm you know, because I'm not a bad actor. I'm not as good as Rick, but I'm you know. I'm, what, I'm, is it, I'm, what is it? What is it? It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, I play a really tall guy, like a sort of. That's six the part. Seven. That's the part, though, isn't it? About you've got. A beard. I'm a character who's um, six or seven inches tall, and I'm trying to win the world's uh, tallest man. That's it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there's always a man that beats me every year because he's slightly taller. But this year, I think for some reason, because I've been training, I can beat him. That's the and, um Sally Phillips, I don't know if you know Sally Phillips, she, she's a very good, uh, comedy writer and actress and she's written it. So it was good fun and so we went down there and it was good and everything. It was, you know, a little trailer and everything. It was like the proper deal. It was really good. And, um, the problem was yesterday I had to dance. One of the sequences had me dancing. Now, as you know, I think I'm a pretty groovy dancer. I'm yeah. pretty, I'm a bit of a mover. Yeah. And I have to tell you this, Rick. Do you have anyone's eye out with your elbow? <laughs> I have come to some serious realizations about my dancing. Really? I was moving around like a shire horse dancing. Really? It was terrible. I was just like quick and they, they say this choreographer trying to show me some moves and it was just- He was, was just like crying by the end yeah, of it. Yeah, it was they, they really were, they were, <laughs> Yeah. It was so bad, but the worst thing about it is, today, my whole body is ravaged with pain and agony. It's- I'm utterly devastated by the, the agony of it. Trying to get down the stairs this morning, I swear to God, I look like Thor Heard. <laughs> Trying to hobble that, it was mad. I was like I'd had several hit replacements. I was like, I had to go down an angle, going down the stairs, it was ludicrous. And I was really worried, suddenly I'm thinking, because I thought I was pretty fit and pretty sure. you know, groovy and everything. Mm. And I had been discussing with, um, this mate of mine, my housemate, that we should maybe do start doing some exercise, because mm. I'm putting on a little bit of weight, right, he's quite a thin, tall guy, he has a belly, I don't know how to summarise it. Have you ever seen the film Junior with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah. It looks like that. Really? It's like grotesque. So the two of us were, so we suggested, we decided that we were gonna do some exercise together, right? This is what we're gonna do. We, each morning we were gonna get up, we were gonna exercise together. That won't happen. Right. Well, no, but wait, Rick. You see, you're wrong because a couple of days ago I said to him, listen, what we should do is get one of those, like, health videos. You know, those kind of training videos, what they're called, like, um, I don't know, they might have an aerobics thing or a yeah. sort of hour long workout. Mm -hmm. I said to him, get one of the ones that's hosted by, like, um, Pauline Quirk. Oh. Elle McPherson or Cindy Crawford, you know, you know, someone like that, someone sexy, right? So, uh, I swear to God, we went down this morning, we put it on, right? Just want you to picture this scene, right? It's me and my mate in our shorts, right? Nine o'clock in the morning, working out- You didn't actually do it. To Helen from Big Brother's <laughs> video, right? That was- it was the cheapest one, Steve, you told me. <laughs> Thanks very much, mate. We saw that advertised as yeah. well. Working out, right? And the two of us in our shorts, she's there, like, the, you know, she's the closest there is to a living Homer Simpson, right, shouting out and stuff. I just wanted to be reassured, Rick. There's nothing gay about that, is there? Um... There's nothing a touch kind of fruity about that image. No, I mean, I th the ones you'd avoid would be sort of Liza Minnelli, Roy right, Cal. Cher. Um, uh, Graham Norton, obviously. <laughs> yeah, um, Del Winton. Gay Byrne. 
Right, sure. He's not gay. No. But, I mean, the name's a little yeah. bit gay, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So, I think, I, I think, Helen from Big Brother, you're probably safe. Mm -hmm. Um, who else? Who else? I don't know what, what else to tell you, really. Um, but I mean, because I know you've got a personal trainer, I'm obviously not in that kind of state, there's kind of states at the moment, I don't have that kind of cash. <laughs> right, little if that's If that's annoyed you, I'll tell what? you what is really weighing me up. Go on. The last week or so, this postal strike. <laughs> I tell you, Rick, I, I have got no sympathy for him. I'd be a scab. I'd be walking through there and I'd be, <laughs> no, and I'd be giving him the finger. I'd go, you can intimidate my family. I don't care. I don't care because the post has got to get through. Because yeah. I tell you what, um, it's, it's, it's not the fact that, uh, you know, the unions, they could organise a strike. I'm behind that. It's fair enough. But not when it's these wildcats. They're just out there. They're just taking days off willy nilly. They're not, they're, they're wow. sealing up the post boxes. It's going crazy. Maybe Carl could deliver a few records well, Monday. Well, I know, so I know could... Carl must be livid because he's probably his copies of the New Scientist <laughs> and the Literary <laughs> Review haven't turned up. So he's, he's in a terrible way. <laughs> and uh, I got important documents that are supposed to be coming to yeah. me. There's nothing. There's no. Yeah. There's hiding the hair of it. And I was cooking last night, and I, it got me panicked because I was thinking about w if this just is going to spread now amongst other organisations and other yeah. groups. And you know what? <laughs> like it's a partly, cancer. It was partly because I was cooking. Yeah. But you know, I suddenly become terrified that they might go on strike. Go on. The guys in charge of the potatoes. Oh, Every, I mean what, anyone involved with potatoes. I had so the, much the mash farmers. last night. I had so much sausage mash. Well, I, I, the second helpings that I had to sit on the edge of a seat so my stomach could hang down. It's I love spuds, spuds and bread. I could not do without but spuds I feel, and bread. I feel like maybe I could make my own bread. Spuds. I wouldn't know where to start with a spud. Yeah, and it's like you, they're amazing. You can boil them. You can broil them. Yeah, I don't know what broiling is, but I. I, it's. I suspect Doesn't, it's tasty. I don't think it's as good as. I mean, obviously the chipped potato is for is the working classes. The oh, chip. it was always on the chip fat fire was always on in my household. The ceiling, the uh, you know, the, the death trap fire. Um, what's it? Polystyrene ceiling <laughs> <Yeah>. was yellow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Come yeah. Wednesday in our house. Yeah. And, uh, it, yeah, it always had chips. Because I, all I remember hearing, if, if I think back to my childhood, all I remember was, um, got to stop and get some potatoes, or phone your dad, tell him to get some potatoes. Well, that was, that was your job, wasn't it? Carl? Yeah, the potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like... I mean, it genuinely, it does concern me, because what it's- What did you have to do? Didn't you have to, did you have to fill a diary out for your well, teacher? Way, do you know when you're at school, I don't know if, if you do the same thing, but you, you get like a little red book, right? And every night, I think it was a way of the teachers sort of keeping an eye on you, so if you went out robbing, if you wrote it in your diary, they'd go, what are you playing at? Sure. Right? So you'd have to write down what you did every night. Yeah. But I didn't get up to that much at that point. Sure. I, I used to just go on my errands. Yeah. And it was my job to like... I haven't had errands for since no, the 70s. Nice that. Just, 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 I went to Uphays, right, the little local supermarket. Yeah. And I got, uh... What's it called? Euthan euthanasia? <laughs> what? I did... Uphays. 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 Like, H-U-G-H. Uphays. Oh, Uh-huh. Uphays. Yeah. 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 Uphays. Yeah. 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 And, uh, I just had to get, I just had to get, like, a bag of potatoes. Of course you did, yeah. And a loaf. Staple. So, yeah. uh, I used to put that in my diary every day, and it got to a point when, like, even the teachers were like, just, just make something up. Yeah. <laughs> stop, stop, stop putting the same thing in. I sure, start that. joyriding that or something. Live! I'm, I remember uh, when Jane was little, she was at school, I think it was about ten or something, that, do a project uh, over the week, and they were given a big list of, like, a, a list of a hundred animals mm. that they had to tick when they saw one that week. And the teacher knew she cheated, because she ticked beaver. <laughs> so she was trying to win and get as bit as she knew. Unless... It was Susie Dibblethwaite's beaver. <laughs> oh, I know the school slut. Had one. I don't she know, maybe. I don't know, but um, yeah. So uh, uh, I'm just. I was saying, I just it feels like it feels like the potato people have got me over a barrel. You know, I mean, they could hike the prices up. I still have to buy the potatoes. I got nothing else. I got to have that. You know, you got your fancy pastas for the uh, for the upper classes, but for the working classes, it's chips or uh, or mash, isn't it really? Yeah, no, I wouldn't worry. I don't think people who do potatoes are going to go on strike. I don't think so. Because we just go and pick them ourselves, don't we? Or grow them ourselves. Sure. Sure. Is there, is there, what would be the most pointless strike? What would be the strike that we went so? Do you know what I mean? I'll tell you, what, I'll tell you one strike that would we'd go so. Um, those guys who do sketches in Covent Garden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah, paint me a picture. Or they, 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 they do a caricature of you. The strike! Yeah. Imagine the strike! You go out and you go, well, I want one with a big nose and a big yeah. chin. I want an amusing caricature of me and my sister. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, dear. But I need, I, can't, I need a sketch, I need a pencil drawing of Leonardo DiCaprio. Looking like a monkey. <laughs> I mean, how are we gonna get this? This is unbelievable. Yeah, so I'll tell uh, you, I'll tell you also, the strikes that have no effect. But Those, um, people in, um, in nightclub toilets, who just, you know, kind of there, they got the, uh, the Lynx deodorant spray. I don't know, quite controversial at the moment, with, uh, the Tweedy case. <laughs> oh, the Cheryl Tweedy case. Do you know what I mean? I had a bit of good news this morning. Go Rick. on. 
Um, I was on the tube coming down, and uh, I don't, uh, I don't want to sound arrogant, I don't want to sound pushy, but um, I was at Green Park, and I'm fairly certain, Rick, it's not 100% corroborated. I'm fairly certain that a woman pinched my arse. So what do you think of that? Yes. yes. Th th there's a lot of pop uh, pickpockets around Green Park. No, 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 my wallet was still there. Really? But even if it wasn't, you know, that would have been money well spent. But, <laughs> but, but, but the, but the wallet was still there, so how, <laughs> what do you think of them apples? Eh? So what did she just pinch your I don't, I can't confirm it at this stage, uh, exactly what happened, but it certainly felt like a pinch. I looked round, there By was- a woman. There was a woman behind me. Right. She was fairly old. She was, I think, she's probably in her mid-thirties. Right. Um, kind of reddish hair. Right. Uh, I don't know if she's listening. Right. But, uh, she knows where I am. And, um, so I don't know how to proceed, really, Rick. I don't know if it's worth putting up some posters <laughs> around the Green Park area. Well, what you could Just do... to try and corroborate well, it. If you saw a woman pinch the lanky you... guy's arse, no, please we could, you could probably get in, uh, a contact with British Rail and look, go back over their CC exactly, CCTV Exactly, CCTV cameras, yeah. And then they could probably zoom in and, you know, sort of identify and sort of birthmarks or <laughs> exactly. she might have been holding some up. Then I could hire a private eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, money well spent. <laughs> well, so, uh, so, there you go. You know, I'm just so, saying, I mean, I'm just saying maybe the, you know, maybe things are looking up. Things are- It's getting are towards Christmas. D the worm has turned. Hey? I don't, I, I mean, you know, it's a little, uh, sexy story to get the show <laughs> going. It is, it is but, so what do you make of that then, Carl? Really that, you're Carl? quite damning. Um. What's your answer? Well, I mean, you're quite a, quite a tall fella. Sure. So, she must have really wanted to sort of reach up and <laughs> and have a pinch. Hmm. Do you know well, what you mean? think she, she was a dwarf? She, she did it with her teeth. He didn't thinking. say she was a dwarf. No, no, but Steve's taller than, you know, his arse. Yeah, but his arse isn't six foot nine, is it? Well, his arse is about three foot off the floor. F four foot? What? Four foot off, off the floor. Uh, no, I don't think so. About three. She'd have to be a midget to have to reach up to pinch Steve's arse. He is very tall, but yeah. I don't know what no, your point is there, Carl. You're just you're just trying to you're, you know you're just. Uh, no, I, I think know. maybe you're just a little bit jealous. Just a little bit no. of jealousy. Um, but uh, I was just obviously I was talking about this little bit of acting I was doing yesterday, and uh, not wishing to be disrespectful to anyone that was involved, but there was um, obviously some extras or supporting artists, as I believe they're known, and you know all good, good lovely people, really putting the effort in, doing good work and everything. But there's this one guy I stood next to, and you know he's quite a tall guy, uh, not quite as tall as me, but tall guy, you know, quite a good-looking bloke, whatever. And uh, I just sat there, and he, he obviously gets quite boring because there's a lot of just hanging around and people waiting and stuff, fixing lights. I just stood next to him, and he just went. Oh, he was looking for something to say to me, obviously, and he went, looking forward to the new Guns N' Roses album? <laughs> and I went, I didn't realise there was one on the way, actually. He went, yeah, yeah, obviously they, uh, it, it, uh Slash won't be in it, because obviously Slash is no longer with them, but, uh, <laughs> bloody a sweet child of mine, one of my, one of my favourites. Just started singing some of the songs. <laughs> I went, okay, great. Without went, yeah, irony, I assume. Absolutely without irony. He was just wanting to get onto a discussion of Guns N' Roses, but I'll tell you this, he did not look like a rocker in any way. He looked like a bloke who would work in, sort of, an accountancy, Barclays. uh, agency, uh, yeah, or Barclays, yeah, behind the counter, or something like yeah. that. Very well scrubbed, well groomed. I was say, there's yeah. nothing wrong with Barclays or the people who work therein. <laughs> That's true enough. Okay. So he goes, yeah, I mean, I, I got into them with uh, Appetite for Destruction, the classic first album, um, but I even, you know, I enjoyed the spaghetti incident as well. I mean, I like all of them. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, right, okay. And he goes, I said, um, uh, I said to him, have you ever seen them live or anything? He went, I have not seen them live, no, but I was lucky enough to be at Donington, Monsters of Rock, <laughs> and, uh, Slash's Snake Pit was playing, <laughs> which was Slash's solo effort. Yeah, you know, yeah. And he went, I've never been, I've never been to, uh, those live gigs before. And, uh, I was down in the mosh pit. Oh, man, I was down there, and I'll tell you this, have you been in the mosh pit? I went, oh, no, he goes, oh, it's crazy down there. It's wild. A guy threw a punch at me, I punched him, knocked him straight out. He knocked me out, someone's his fight went off. Oh, it was amazing, it was amazing, amazing. I went, are you gonna go back? He went, no, I won't, because once you've done something like that, you can never repeat the, um, the experience. You know, I mean, I was, they, everyone there was dressed in black. I think I was the only guy wearing a white t-shirt. <laughs> I was like, okay, I could just imagine him tucked in as well. That's, why, that's why I attacked him. Exactly. It's like ants. <laughs> yeah. They, they Slash thought he, himself. So yeah. The <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a termite in the nest. Exactly. And they just turned on him. But so the venue, so I'm going, okay, so, so, do you go to gigs often? He went, no, I don't think I'm ever gonna go to another rock gig. And I said to him, why? And he went, I don't think any gig I go to will be able to top the experience of seeing UB40 live. <laughs> And I, do you know what I mean? And I oh, almost no, did what you well, did. Well, that's, that's why I've never seen him live, because I don't want to end my life. But I almost laughed. No I in. thought it was a joke. 
I thought he was making a joke and I was about to laugh and I realised he was deadly serious and I went- You be I went, forty. Oh, good were they, he went absolutely blinding. Um, one of the sure. most incredible live experiences I've ever seen. I imagine. Um, did remarkable. they do songs in a sort of mock reggae style? Apparently for they two did. hours. And then he Excellent. began to tell me which- which of his favourite- he went, I- I don't know if- I said, have they done anything recently or put anything out? He went, I don't think they're gonna be able to top, um, those classic albums, Bag of Rhythm, and yeah. Right in the Kitchen. I remember once when I went to sign on, Okay, and it, I don't know what year it was, must have been like 1979 or something. And, uh, my first, I left school. And, uh, um, tell me if I'm wrong if it wasn't out then, but this bloke was at the back with sort of like a ghetto blaster and he was playing one in ten. <laughs> right. Obviously making a point, he was in the dole office. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone ignored him, <laughs> and when it finished playing, he turned it down. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, he took, wow. it, took a number and queued. The days when they were a protest. Thing. When was that? What year was that? What year oh, did I? I uh, someone can pinpoint that for me. Phone in 0870-800-1234. I know it had just come out. But um, but what was amazing is when he said that about you before him being the best live experience you've ever seen. I th it was one of those moments where you thought I never thought I'd hear someone say that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't know why that. I can't understand what kind of person you are. I suddenly realised at that moment there was such a chasm between us. Is there anyone out there whose favourite band is UB40? <laughs> Red, wet wine, 40. maybe. You be you be you be forty, yeah. Oh, they're, anyway, they're a great God bunch of blokes, you. though. You see them, they, they, they crack me up when I see them interviewed. They're really funny. But, um, once you've heard one, that's pretty much it, yeah, isn't it? Absolutely. I imagine. I mean, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm a Philistine. Maybe there's some hidden depths to them that we don't understand. Uh, maybe some great tracks that you could, yeah. uh, if you're a big fan. Well, I'm never gonna go and see him because, why, <laughs> why, no, no, why sort of, like, top your experiences? Exactly. You know. Cause you never give it a better it. When, when I know I'm definitely dying, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go. You'll summon them. Get to me, play for you. Boy. Yeah. Get me, you <laughs> Do, get me labour of love live. Do, do right in the kitchen. <laughs> no.